coming up on this episode of the Hockey Nuts. Steve and I get you caught up with all the player transactions that have been going on since we last recorded. Free agency opened on July 1, and almost every team got at least one or more new players. We'll have all the details. Also, there have been a lot of trades that have taken place over the past couple weeks. We'll get you caught up with those as well. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. This is the Hockey Nuts Podcast, Season 2, Episode 1, recorded on Thursday, July 6, 2017. Free agent signings and trades. Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of the Hockey Nuts Podcast. My name is Wayne, I'm here with Steve. How's it going today, Steve? It's going good, Wayne. Historic day for us. (laughs) Season 2, Episode 1. I'm very excited. (laughs) That's right, Season 2. So we have, uh, as we've said in previous podcasts, we have aligned our so-called seasons with the NHL season, so... Since July 1st officially starts the uh, next season, the 17-18 season in the NHL, uh, we have followed suit and we are doing the same thing with the podcast. So this is the first episode of the brand new season. So here we are. We're starting our second year of podcasting. (laughs) Yeah. Very excited. And uh, since we've last got together, there's been uh, a lot of stuff going on. Not so much on the ice, but off the ice. It's, it's uh, We're in the middle of free agent season, so we've got a lot of to stuff to talk about. Of course, the last time we recorded, we talked about the entry draft. We talked about the uh, expansion draft uh, and, and some Thanks. trades and stuff that happened before that. And this week, we're pretty much... Continuing on with the trades, and of course, July 1st started free agency, which is kind of like Christmas for us hockey fans. <laughs> yeah. We get to find out if our teams get new players or lose players or just uh, stay as they are. So uh, we've got a ton to talk about on that on that front. So uh, other than that, um, there really hasn't been going on, a lot going on. Uh, there were a lot of transactions on July 1st. And then it kind of died down over the weekend. Well, understandably so. It's it was it was 150th anniversary of Canada on July 1st, uh, right. Canada Day, and uh, July 4th. Oh, pretty much down here in the states. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, July 1st, of course, was Saturday. But uh, where I work, it seemed like nobody was working from June 30th all the way through July 4th. Um, yeah. <laughs> It was yeah. a long weekend for for most everybody, except That's us. For, for, you know, of course, I had to work right straight through the weekend, but yeah. Uh, but I've got some time off coming up, so I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, that's good. So yeah. I, go ahead. I, I I agree with you uh, that, that uh, and it's a good thing. You know, I, I love this holiday period here, um, but uh, it seems that restaurants, stores, even uh, a lot of places will shut down for for a few days. Uh, and, and observe uh, the 4th of July holiday. Yep. And uh, so things go, get slower. Um, and, and that's a, that's a good thing. You get a, even though you're at work, it's, it's not as uh, hectic perhaps. And uh, so uh, that's a, that's a blessing. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So we got a lot to talk about uh, this week. Uh, and, and this is actually, before we get going, uh, just a little housekeeping. This is going to be our last show until somewhere around July 26th. Uh, we have tentatively, tentatively scheduled our next podcast uh, to be on July 26th, give or take a day or two, uh, and then the next one after that, August 16th, because uh, both of us have vacations coming up. I'm going to be gone. Um, we're taking a trip up north uh, all the way to, well, we're leaving in about a week or so, and we're coming back uh, just before we, uh, record the next podcast. So, uh, uh, so me and the kids are going to go up and visit some friends and family up North. So, uh, well, my wife, great. my wife is going to stay down and babysit the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, 
that'll be good. Yep. I, I'm scheduled to go. My my wife's uh, daughter lives in Wilmington, so uh, not this weekend and not next weekend, but the following weekend, uh, we're scheduled to go for that weekend. So I got a little trip coming up too. So, yep. um, but that that should be good. Yep. So a little time away from the grind will be good for. I def- desperately need a break from work. Not so much a break from this because this is still fun, but. Yeah, <laughs> I'll right. miss I'll I, miss this while we're gone. But I, but I agree. But things are going to die down here anyway. Uh, it already hit, pretty much has. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, break from work is going to be definitely needed for uh, for for me in particular. So, all right. Well, let's get into some things uh, again before we get going. If you'd like to interact with the show, you can reach us uh, through Twitter. I'm at Wayne Halley nine. And Steve is at sball five zero four man. And if you've been following me over the past couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of tweeting. Uh, every time I see a news story come across that I feel would be uh, interesting to our listeners, uh, I do generally just retweet it and send it along. Um, so it basically saves our listeners. If you want to, uh, I follow a good chunk of the uh, the hockey media, uh, the hockey teams themselves. Uh, so if you wanted to just follow me, you can consolidate all of that. And when I do see some new stories come across, uh, I try to send them along. So I'm sure you've been seeing some of those tweets come through if you've been following me. Uh, you can also email the show. I'm at feedback at uh, thehockeynuts.com. Uh, you can uh, email us directly on the show there. Uh, you can reach us through our Facebook page, our facebook.com slash thehockeynuts. We have a YouTube channel now. It's thehockeynuts.com slash YouTube. Um, and that will redirect you right to our YouTube page. Uh, and as a reminder, too, when we record the podcast, we do live stream it. So you could actually watch us record it, so to speak. Uh, watch us make the bacon if you, <laughs> or make the sausage. So <laughs> I got that expression all wrong. Anyway, you can watch us uh, make the sausage. Uh, and uh, we stream it both on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, and in fact, I believe I'm also streaming on Twitch uh, at uh, I can't remember my channel name there, but uh, uh, we're we're under the uh, talk show session section of Twitch as well. Um, but uh, just subscribe to a service that basically streams at everywhere, <laughs> everywhere that has streaming. So without further ado, let's get into this. Um, some of the things that happened over the past week, of course, we've got free agency, we've got trades, and I, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is I attended in person uh, one of the Canes development camp days, and I also watched a couple of the sessions online as well, uh, so I've got some uh, notes and stuff from the Hurricanes. Uh, I know a lot of the teams are going through their development camps this week. Well, the Hurricanes got theirs out of the way last week. And uh, that was an interesting time uh, yeah. to go hang out over there. So I've got a few. Very, very uh, much looking forward to hearing that. Yep. So I got yep. a few, few, few stories come out of that. So um, other than that, let's get going. Yes, sir. Let's start with what we'll probably do this week, just to keep things somewhat easy and organized, rather than go. I guess we could have taken the time to go team by team and done it that way, but um, I figured what we do is just go with. Let's talk about all the trades first that have happened since our last uh, podcast, and then we will uh, talk about free agent signings after that. So uh, we go all the way back to, let's see, we last recorded on June 27th, right? That's correct. Okay. Did we talk about the Mark Mathot trade with Vegas? I think we did on the last one. Yes, we did. All right, so that leads us up to June 29th would be the next trade that happened. And that was a, actually a trade involving the Hurricanes and the Flames. Uh, the Flames uh, got, and I'm trying to follow this correctly. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. All right, Mark Mathot is now with the Dallas Stars, right? As I believe that's correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to read this. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I got it now. All right. So this is an interesting trade that I came across. The Hurricanes and the Flames made a trade, and, and it's actually feels like it happened a long time ago. Uh, the Hurricanes were able to get rid of Eddie Lack in this trade. Uh, Hurricanes sent Eddie Lack, defenseman Ryan Murphy, uh, who's a former first-round draft pick, by the way, uh, but has been playing mostly kind of spot outings in, in the NHL. Most of his time was spent in the American Hockey League. 
Um, so they sent Lack, Murphy, and a seventh round pick in 2019 to Calgary. And Carolina received Keegan Kanzig, a defenseman, and a 2019 sixth round pick. And Keegan Kanzig, I looked into him. He is basically a project defenseman at this point. He's okay. a he's a long shot to make it to the NHL. Um, he's playing, I believe, in the American League at this point. Um, mm-hmm. And also as part of that trade, Carolina retains 50% of Eddie Lack's salary. So, um, so basically, I mean, the, my first reaction to this trade was just Carolina just dumped Eddie Lack. Uh, Calgary really didn't give up anything to get him. I was just about to say that. <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem like, you know, and plus Carolina's footing the bill for 50% of the trade. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, you know, Car- Carolina has Lack. They have still have Cam Ward, and of course they now have uh, Scott Darling, right? Uh, so all all three goaltenders are making in it. I think Eddie Lack was the lowest paid one at about two point six million. So mm-hmm. um, you really can't carry three goalies making two plus million dollars a year. That's right on an NHL team. So the Carolina had no choice; they had to get rid of Lack, and I think that put Calgary in a, in a bit of a spot of power at this point and you know they knew right. that that they had to dump black and i you know kind of wish that carolina would have been able to get something more for him but um they uh they really didn't and then of course they gave up ryan murphy who you know was supposed to be a really big uh prospect for them but over the last couple of years they've just been really disappointed with uh his play i guess they just haven't been giving him a chance at the nhl level so uh, they ended up dumping him and and I don't know if you saw, but the very next day or the day after that, uh, Murphy ended up getting released or bought out by <laughs> by Calgary. So, well, well, I did not see that. Yeah. Holy so, smokes. So apparently Murphy's stock has fallen uh, quite a ways in that. Wow. Uh, yeah, I did not see that. Oh, they actually put him on waivers, I think, is what they ended up doing. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, Carolina, you know, uh, yes, it sounds like they dumped they dumped him, and and really a sixth round pick. You, you don't know. It's it's you have no idea whether or not that pick will ever turn out. But the other side of the coin is it is two point six million dollars, and yes, they have to cover it for fifty percent. But they're they're in a more comfortable position as far as when the season starts. They know who their goalie is. Yep. They know who their backup is. Yep. And they have some stability, and it was an expensive thing to do to get that stability, but they have some stability as far as the team goes. And I think um, that's good for Bill Peters. Um, I think, I, I, I mean, just looking and thinking about it uh, conceptually right now, you know, and I'm a head coach, I'm going in there, I know, I know how my goalie position is set up. I can, I can start making plans right now. Yep. Uh, just that that's a that's a peace of mind that, you know, you, it, it, Carolina especially really needs. Uh, on the other side, you have Calgary, who definitely needs goalie help. If ever there was a team, yep. uh, they they struggle in that in that area. Well, and, and, they've, and they've made some transactions and we'll get to those to try right. to shore up their goalie situation. Yeah, right. So uh, it's a good thing. I think this is a good trade, even though you're right. It, uh, Carolina gave up a lot for really nothing. Um, but it, it, that, that I, I think if you, if you take a step back and look at it, it's probably a very good move and a wise move to, to get this behind them. Yep. Yeah. And it does, and it does nail down. So you're, now you're going into this, to the season with Darling as your starter, uh, Ward as your backup, which, you, which, <coughs> you know, obviously Ward has been the face of the franchise in terms of goaltending anyway for, I mean, since they won the cup back in 06. Right. Uh, but for the last two or three years, uh, he, it, the the amount of work he's been getting there as as in Cal, in Carolina is just um it's showed that he's he, he's not a starter anymore. I guess is probably right. the you know get right to it. He's not a starter anymore. Right. This will be a good role for him. He'll be able to to put his workload way back. Um, right. and and we'll see. You'll probably get better performance out of him with with the lighter workload. So oh, I I'd agree. And and you know Wayne, I mean, uh, what you think? What do you think about it? But a very capable backup. Oh yeah, uh, they're in trouble. Uh, Darling gets hurt. Something happens. Here's a guy that can step in, and they're very confident in what he can do and his ability. Yep. Uh, you know, they they've shored up their goalie position very well. Yep. Yep. So, so that's 
It's one of many really good moves that I've seen uh, Carolina make this year. It's got me really excited for that team. So, yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one. On June thirtieth, uh, Buffalo traded Tyler Ennis and Marcus Foligno and a 2018 third round pick to Minnesota in exchange for Marco Scandella, Jason Pominville, and a 2018 fourth round pick. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, I believe this was a case. Uh, you know, it looks to me like uh, Minnesota had to get rid of some salary cap space because right. um, <clears throat> in terms of money anyway, Buffalo took on way more money than uh, than what Minnesota did. So uh, right. Marcus Foligno, I believe, is a restricted free agent, so they still have to sign him. But um, I don't know. I like this trade. Uh, it seems to me pretty, you know, right, right off the bat as a fairly even trade to me. Right. And Buffalo's getting a commodity that they know Jason Pominville used to play there. Yep. So uh, I mean, they're taking him back. He's he's not very young, but um, anymore. Yeah. But uh, Marcus Foligno is is much younger. So so essentially, uh, you know, Minnesota has a an excess of defensemen, mm -hmm. or they did up until this trade. Uh, they got rid of one of the excess defensemen that they have in Scandella, along with a, a with an older veteran forward. So and they got a nice young forward to replace him, and then Tyler Ennis, who's an, who's a veteran forward as well. So. So right. this is a trade essentially to address a couple of needs for both teams. Um, overall, a fairly even trade. All right, Nashville on July 1st. There were a bunch of trades on July 1st, or four trades that I saw. Uh, Nashville sends Colin Wilson to Colorado for a 2019 fourth-round pick. Mm -hmm. uh, salary dumping move for Nashville in my mind. Yes. To make room for some of the transactions that, that we will get to here shortly. Yes. Busy team, Nashville. Yep. yep. Uh, and Colin Wilson gets, you know, he was a highly touted prospect at one time, and he'll get a fresh start there in Colorado. So um, we'll see if anything can be done. Colorado's a rough place to be, though, right now, these days. Uh, July 1st, Carter Verhage, I don't know if I said his name right, uh, and from um, the Islanders, went to Tampa Bay in exchange for Christos Gudlevskis. So pretty minor trade in terms of uh, number of players. Uh, both of them are restricted free agents, have yet been signed by either team. Uh, another one, July 1st, Calgary sends Tom McCollum to Detroit for a 2018 seventh round draft pick. Another very minor play, uh, you know, very low round pick for a, what is essentially a two-way player. Mm -hmm. uh, another one on July 1st involving Vegas. <laughs> Vegas sends Alexi Emelin. Yep. To Nashville for a 2019 third round pick, right? And I, and I, uh, 26 percent of Emmeline's, uh salary is also retained by Vegas. I, I now that's a trade. I I see where Vegas really let go of a guy they maybe could have got more for. Um, yeah, I mean because Alexi Emelin is he's good. Um, you know, I would have said a second round pick at the very least, but um, I don't know what you thought about that. Well, uh, it, it, he it, shuffled it, around quickly here. It makes Nashville's uh, defense even better than they already were, and they were a really good defensive core. That's true. <laughs> now, it, now they got a, a, another good defenseman with a nasty side. So, because Emelin, yeah. Emelin can get nasty at times. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, obviously Nashville is trying to improve themselves, and and I think they have at this point. Uh, Vegas, it looks like they're continuing to stockpile on uh, draft picks. They're pretty much, in my mind, th as far as I see Vegas is, they're treating this season as a throwaway season. Yep, very it, good. It point. really is mm -hmm. with some of the moves they made. I mean, they, the, the players that they picked up at the expansion draft left a lot of people shaking their heads or scratching their heads at the very least. Um, right. And, you know, they picked up a lot of extra players and draft picks as part of the expansion draft and continued to add draft picks during the uh, entry draft. And now in, in this time of the season, they're continuing to do the same. They're dumb. They're getting rid of decent serviceable players and loading up on, on future draft picks. So Vegas right from day one is basically treated this upcoming season and maybe even next season as throwaway seasons. Right. And they're looking three, four years down the road as they're trying to shoot for, um, you know, be at the high end of the draft for the next couple of years, get a couple of really good players right at the top of the draft. And they're, they're shooting to be, 
you know, probably have what, what a lot of teams do on a rebuilding situation is the five year plan, as you hear a lot about. Right. <laughs> I, you know, and I couldn't have said it better, Wayne. I think that's absolutely true. And and you know, you know what's really good. About, I mean, George McPhee is he's turning out to, to handle this very well. But the, the 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 way I'm looking at this is if you if you think about where Vegas is positioned in the Pacific Division, uh, they, they stand a good chance uh, of making the playoffs. Uh, they, they really do. Um, I, I, not in these two, probably probably two seasons, I would think. But when they come out of this three years down the line, the draft picks coming in, free agency, who knows what effect that'll have. It, even this year, they may pick up somebody. But um, they may come out of this and and really stand a good chance at making the playoffs, um, I, at least in my mind, because I can think of some teams right now, you, you know, Vancouver, teams that they'll probably compete pretty well against Yeah. Um, right off the bat. And uh, Calgary, who knows? Uh, th- yeah. They're looking good, but you don't know. But these first this this first year they are going to be a, they're going to be a rough team. They're going to be some some wins to be had over Vegas this year. Right. And I and and I think they can do that because this is the first year of the team that the city is excited. They've got a hockey team. You know, they're going to sell out the building no matter what this year. Oh yeah. Because yeah. it's the new it's the new thing in town. You know, the novelty is going to be there. So they they can pretty much throw away this season and still fill the building. Sure. Um Next year, the probably be, that will continue a little bit more as long as they show improvement year by year. I think yep. they'll still have the faith of the fans. Um, They'll be a good draw on the road, don't you think? Hey, and, I'm go- I'm going to go to the game when they come oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to go see him play. <laughs> yeah, and the jersey sales, you know. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of things around that team that that are going to be. Uh, yep. It's going to be fun to watch. But uh, but it's clear to me now that that Vegas, right from day one, their their goal was not to try to put a competitive team on the ice this season, but to try to be competitive year three, four, and five. I the, so, couldn't have said it better. And and all of their transactions they've made are, are are confusing people. You know, a lot of the press are confused because you know they they're they're seeing these things with the mindset that. Why would they make this trade if they want to try to win now? Well, they're not trying to win now. They're trying to win right. in three years. So everything they're doing is is setting themselves up for a good year three, four, and so on. Uh, years one and two, it's going to be a bad team, quite frankly. I'll I'll be surprised if they finish anywhere close to being a playoff team in years one and two, right. honestly. So, all right. Next trade it was on July 2nd. That was another one involving uh, Vegas. And they traded, uh, uh, well, Chicago traded Marcus Kruger to Vegas for future considerations. So I'm not sure exactly what is going back Chicago's way, but uh, it probably depended a lot on what Vegas would eventually do with Kruger. And we'll mm-hmm. get to that the trade because Kruger is, even though he went to Vegas, he's no longer a member of Vegas. And we'll get to that in a second. Right. Uh, the next trade uh, was on July 2nd. The Capitals sent Marcus Johansson to New Jersey for a 2018 second round pick and a 2018 third round pick. Right. So this, to me, was just a salary cap move. Right. The Capitals had to get rid of some salary cap, uh, right. probably in order to be able to afford that giant Oshi contract that they signed a, a week or so ago. Yeah, very um, true. But they got good. They listen. The Capitals picked up a second round and a third round pick for Mark. That's a good trade. Yep. That's a good trade. And that's a team in New Jersey. They're going to struggle too. I see. I do not see them making the playoffs despite what they're, they've done in, in, the, in the draft. It'll be a real shock to me if Nico Hishier comes out and has the kind of year that Austin Matthews did. No, you're not going to see that. You're not going to yep. see. You're not going to see that year one. You might see it year two or three. Yeah. Um, but there's no guarantee his year is even going to make the team this year. Right. And what they say, the top end of this draft is not that kind. Of, there's no generational players in this draft. There's good serviceable players. NHL. Uh, you know, her year will probably be on their top line at some point. Right. But it may not be this year. Um, he may make the team, but you know, lo- you know, we'll have to wait and see on that. Right. Um, I know New, New, New Jersey is excited to have him, but um, but New Jersey has made some moves, adding Johansson, adding Hershier. Um, you know, they've made some other moves in, in recent weeks that um, 
they're going to be a better team this year, and they're going to be improving. But uh, I, I don't know. I still don't think they're going to be. I agree with you there. They might not be a playoff team just yet. But this trade does make the Capitals a weaker team in the in the near term. Right. It really does. Right. Because Johansson's one of their better forwards, and they just got him. You know, if if you look at you know, just this season, in a nutshell, uh, Capitals really didn't get anything from Marcus Johansson. Yes, they get the extra picks in the second, third round, but that's True. that's two to three years out. Right. So, um, in terms of the Capitals trying to do make transactions to continue to try to win now, this one didn't help them at all. That's very that's, this, that's this true. One, this one made them a weaker team. Right. So, all right, let's move on to the final trade that we had this week. And that was on July 4th involving Vegas and the Carolina Hurricanes. And that one involved Marcus Kruger uh, coming to the Hurricanes. Right. And the Hurricanes gave up a fifth round pick in order to get him. So if you look yeah, at I, if you look at the two trades, so I, I don't know if, if Vegas is going to turn around and give that fifth round pick back to Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's what the future considerations are, because, you know, Kruger was traded from Chicago to Vegas for future considerations. And then Kruger comes to Carolina for a fifth round pick that would stand to believe that, well, Vegas is probably going to give Chicago that fifth round pick. So basically, Vegas played middleman between Chicago and And Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. So this is the third uh, former Chicago Blackhawk. This offseason that that Carolina has added to their team because they added uh, Tra- Trevor Van Riemsdyk and um, oh that's uh, right Trevor Van Riemsdyk yep. and Scott Darling and Scott Darling yep and of course before that Brian Bickle but of course yep. he he retired so um, so he won't be around so I don't know what Carolina is up to here but they seem to like Blackhawk players <laughs> yeah Tavo Teravainen wasn't he the Black yeah Hawk? yeah he was yep. he was. He came over in the uh, uh, in the uh, Bickle trade, didn't he? Right. Yeah. yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah. So. so, well, good. That that's a great trade again for Carolina to get a player that the stature and caliber of Marcus Kruger for a fifth round draft pick is a steal. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I after the third round, I don't know that those draft picks really even. Yeah, it's a total crapshoot. It's crapshoot. It sure is. You just don't know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, that sums up all of the trades that have happened since our last recording. So let's move on to free agent signings. Now I am looking at a very extensive list of free agent signings that actually includes not only unrestricted free agent signings, but restricted free agents. And we're kind of going to lump them all together in this case, um, just for the the sake of simplicity. Uh, So some of these guys are going to be unrestricted free agents and some are going to be restricted. Um, and unfortunately, the list I'm looking at doesn't include their former team. I wish it did. Um, so we'll go down through. And there's been so many. We're not going to worry about the the players that have signed for, you know, 650, 700, 750,000. We're going to look at like 900,000 and up uh, players. Those are probably going to be players that are going to make an impact with their new team. Whereas some of the uh, the six hundred fifty, the eight hundred thousand, you know, those guys guys are are more of roster fillers, um, you know, bottom six pair, uh, bottom six forwards, bottom pairing defensemen, those kind of guys. Uh, right. If you want to see all of those transactions, I have a link in the show notes to this list of transaction that that we're going to be working off tonight. And if you want to see the full list of every player who who got signed, just go to our show notes, click on that that link. And it'll take you right to the the page that has actually all of the transactions on them. So let's go back to June. What did you say? 27th, right? The 27th. That's correct. All right. And so, you're going with the cap, the cap friendly, right? Cap friendly list. Yep. And the first one I have is Eric Griba. Uh, and of course, everything from June 27th to the 30th is obviously restricted free agents because the unrestricted didn't start till July 1st. All right, so Eric Greiba re-signed with Edmonton. Uh, where did I? I just lost it. There it is. Uh, for two years at 900000 a year. Uh, so he uh, re-signs with them. Uh, the next one, Spencer Fu signed with Calgary for two years at nine twenty five per year. It's a good pickup for Calgary. Sure is. He played Won for... the championship with Denver. Yep, yep. He uh, was uh, I, he was a Hobie Baker finalist. Yep. Um, basically, was this was a, a complete free agent at this point. 
I don't believe uh, Calgary owned his rights. He had the ability to sign anywhere he wanted. He actually played for Union College, won the national championship. Oh, yeah, that's right. What am I saying? Yeah. Uh, Denver. Uh, well, you're, you know, top. same jersey color, maroon. <laughs> right. That's right. No, he played for Union College with uh, with Mike Vecchioni. Yep, yep. So, so they were on the team together. So um, so Spencer Fu, that's, a, that's an entry-level deal for him. And they say he's a very... Uh, very fast, very talented player. So he'll be interesting to watch. I wonder if they'll uh, try him on the uh, Johnny Goudreau line. Yeah, that would be kind of that would be kind of interesting to see. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that would be. So he Extreme. he basically is this year's um, what's his name who signed for the Rangers last year? Jimmy VC. Yeah, he's he's this year's Jimmy VC. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Good way to put it. Yep. All right. Next one I have Mike Condon, goaltender, signed with Ottawa. Uh, three years, two point four million per year. Uh, next one I have Brock McGinn, signed with the Car- Carolina Hurricanes for two years, eight eighty seven fifty. Probably could have skipped that one. He's pretty much a depth guy at this point. Uh, number the next one, Sven Andrighetto, right wing, signed with the Avalanche for two years, one point four per year. Uh, he'll be probably on their top six at this point. Uh, you'd be a bottom six at any other team. <laughs> Next one, the Rangers re-signed Brendan Smith. He was actually scheduled to be unrestricted, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. And and that, uh, listen, I'm real thankful for that signing. Uh, I've been I've been pleased with his play. And uh, the Rangers, of course, uh, they needed. Uh, they've got six defensemen now. They really do. And of course we lost Dan Girardi, but uh, we pick up a guy in, in Brendan Smith that quite honestly, in my opinion, is playing better at this point in his career than Dan Girardi. Is. Agreed. Yep. For sure. So, so uh, yeah, definitely uh, that good signing. Yep. Um, yeah. I would agree with that. Brendan Smith obviously came in as a quote unquote rental, um, right. but decided he liked it in New York and decided to stay. So he'll be there for another four years. At right. four, at four point three, right? Um, and and and, do you and think remember, that's a little high, or well, he, here's the thing: he's he's another connection with Wisconsin. Now they 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 traded Derek Stepan, and and I am I'm still trying to get my head around that one. I, I really uh, I hate that loss. We Derek Stepan was a very important player to our team, chemistry wise, playmaker wise. I don't know, and and they did it for cap room, but. I, I don't know that that trade really bothered me, um, and maybe they they just could. There's nothing they could. Maybe there's something else coming this summer, Wayne, that we don't know about. <laughs> but I wouldn't have traded Derek Stepan, and I'm very uh, that 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 one. Uh, frankly, well, here's I, something. Here's something I thought about about the Derek Stepan trade. The Rangers have been pretty high on. Um, oh man, why is his name escaping me? Uh, Bushnevich, mm-hmm. and he really didn't play that much last year. He right, was, he was a healthy scratch a lot last year. He was injured too, uh, and he was injured for a while. Back so, spasms. So I'm wondering if they're clearing a little bit of space up front to give uh, Bushnevich more of a top six role because even when he played, he wasn't in top six a lot. Right, they had him on a third line, sometimes even fourth line. Um, so, you know, I wonder if they cleared out step on a little bit to let a guy like him, uh, have a little bit more ice time and more of a, more of an offensive role. Could be. I don't know. It's just a theory, right? Just a thought, right? I, uh, like I said, I, Brendan Smith, good move. And, uh, we need that. We need that guy. Yep. So, and he, and as I said, he's a Wisconsin is what I was saying. He's a Wisconsin connection. He and, yeah, and you love your Wisconsin connection oh, yeah, with the Rangers. That's, that's definitely, <laughs> Uh, uh, the Rangers, uh, connection there yep. with, uh, with college hockey. So, um, and, and, and that, that, you know, they're always going to give guys from that team a good look. Yep. All right. Good. Well, the next one we're going on to is Christopher Stieg, who signed a one-year contract, 1.75, uh, Mr. Mr. One-year contract, Christopher Stieg. <laughs> and, and I've listened to some podcasts. A lot of people question, why does Christopher Stieg always sign a one-year contract? His last several contracts he's he signed, probably the last several years, have all been one year contracts. And yeah. and I thought of something. I'm like, you know, it's not actually a bad idea for a guy like him to sign a one year contract because he knows he's not going to be a top six guy. He's not. He's not going to be. You know, people aren't going to. You're not going to build a franchise around Chris for Stieg, right? Right. Well, if he signs just a one year contract, he essentially gets to choose the team he plays for from year to year to year. 
Right. And a guy like him who likes nothing more than to win the Stanley Cup. Right. You know, of course, they all like to win a Stanley Cup, but, you know, Versteeg really likes to try to win the Stanley Cup. He gets to choose the team he wants to go on so he can go from competitor to competitor year to year to year. And, and you know, that's a good point. I never thought about it that and way. If he choo- and if he chooses wrong, then he knows he's probably going to be a guy that's going to be a rental. So he, he could end up getting traded to a contender if, if the team he chose at the beginning of the year isn't a contender. He'll, he may end up on one at the end of the year because his contract will be up. He's, it makes him a perfect rental player. You know, right. add as a depth guy. Um, it's actually not a bad move. If you if all you want to do is to win, you know, a Stanley Cup as often as you possibly can. Sure. Why not sign one year contracts every year? And, and if you don't mind bouncing around, Mo- right. most of the guys like the stability of living in one area. They want to buy a house. They have a family, kids, yada, yada, yada. You know, they're human beings, too. Right. Um, but some players just don't mind bouncing around from team to team. And he's clearly one of those guys. So, all right. The next one I have is Keith Kincaid, a uh, goaltender signed with the New Jersey Devils. Uh, two years, 1.25 a year. So he's signed on. I believe he'll be their backup there. Right. Behind Corey Schneider. Yep. Um, so that tandem will continue for another year or another two years, actually, because I believe Schneider's uh, signed long term. So. Uh, the next one, Jordan Wheel, uh, has signed with the Philadelphia Flyers. Two years, 1.75 per year. Kind of a depth forward for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one, Dmitry Orlov, defenseman, uh, re-signed with the Capitals. Six years, 5.1 a year. So that contract totals $30.6 million. A lot of money. So he's only 25, so... They've basically signed on at, to have him as a cornerstone of their defense going forward. Um, they have to sign somebody. <laughs> they have to keep somebody. But, uh, um, you yeah, know, Washington overall as a team I see is going to be taking a step back this year, and I'm pretty excited about that because, <laughs> you know, I don't like to see the tame, same teams win over and over and over. I like to see new teams come up. All right, the next one, Michael Stone, a defenseman, Signed with the Calgary Flames uh, for 3.5 a year for three years. Mm-hmm. So, again, uh, another Calgary's quietly amassed quite a nice defensive core as well. Yes, they have. Uh, the next one I have is Alex Petrovich has signed with the Florida Panthers defenseman for one year at 1.8 million a year. So, that will be, um, it'll be one of their probably what a f- Four, five, six defensemen somewhere in that neighborhood, or do you think he's higher than that? Alex Petrovich. Yeah. Um, on that team, I think he's he he's, he's top not four. One, two, and three. Yeah. Okay. I would think he's four, five, or six, like you said. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on. There's so many here, we can't spend too much time on any one. <laughs> All right. Goaltender Chad Johnson signed with the Buffalo Sabers. Yeah. Uh, this is the first of the um, unrestricted free agents. This is. As of July 1st. So mm-hmm. uh, he signed a one year contract for $2.5 million a year. Here's another guy who seems to be jumping from team to team uh, right. in a back. He knows he's not a starter uh, and he's a very serviceable, back- serviceable backup. Uh, the Bruins had him one year uh, and he was uh, very good for the Bruins that year. I wish he, they would have been able to keep him, but uh, uh, the year that he was here, the Bruins were in cap trouble and they couldn't hang on to him. So he ended up Of course, up he started, up. he came up the ranks in the Rangers franchise. Yep. And uh, he is a very good goalie. If he's just given a chance to, to with some stability, uh, I think he could do very well. Um, what do you think that trade is a direct result of, of Carolina and their uh, move with Eddie Lack, um, uh, uh, Calgary's move with Eddie Lack, because um, or, or, Johnson was with Calgary, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, this is the second year in a row where Calgary has completely turned over their goaltending tandem. So uh, yeah. they obviously weren't happy with Elliott and Johnson, so they're trying two new goalies this year. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting deal. Well, they, well, Calgary now has uh, Smith and Lack as right. their, their one and two, and I still don't think that's going to be, it's certainly not a cup contending tandem for sure. But no, nope. I agree with you. But w- will it, it remains to be seen whether or not the the Smith Lack tandem will be better than the uh, Elliot than Johnson the, than the Elliot Johnson tandem. So I agree. I- <laughs> said it better, Wayne. Yeah, that's a pretty good tandem. It, it might be have. a slight upgrade over the previous tandem because Elliott really didn't have that great of a year, uh, and then Johnson. Well, 
you know, he's not going to be a, a starter anyway, but yeah. uh, we'll see. All right. Uh, one I skipped over that I want to touch on. Uh, Patrick Sharp goes back to Chicago, signs a one-year contract for 800000 Yep. Uh, and, you know, I wanted to touch on that one because of, uh, you know, obviously Patrick Sharp is a pretty big, pretty big name. He was with the Blackhawks for a lot of years. And this is the first of a couple of signings I saw the Blackhawks do that they're kind of, I don't know if they're trying to get the band back together or what, <laughs> trying yeah. to bring, bring a few players back that, you know, they're, they're bringing back uh, Brendan Saad. They're now they're bringing back, uh, uh, you know, they're just bringing back guys that, that were on cup winning teams before. So you got Saad coming back. You got Sharp coming back. It's like, you know, it's usually not a good thing. Right. I, uh, they, they, I really thought Patrick Sharp was worth a whole lot more than that. Uh, it seems like his stock has really dropped. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was kind of surprised that, but maybe he did take a bit of a pay cut because his last contract he was at uh, 5.9 yeah. a year, and he, he dropped all the way to 800,000. So I wonder if if he took a bit of a, what we want to call a hometown discount here. Yeah. That's a big discount. <laughs> you know because yeah he was he his previous contract it was five years 5.9 per year i mean that's, and then the that's... contract before that was four years 3.9 per year so yeah he's been making he's been making a, a really good money for quite a long time and now all yeah. of a sudden he comes back for eight hundred thousand. so yeah you're right that is a huge discount of course he's 35 so he is he is so yeah. um you know chicago could end up with a with a bargain there if they can get they can get, say, I don't know what kind of offense they could expect out of a 35-year-old Patrick Sharp. Um, if they could find a way to get 20 goals out of him. Yep, which is very doable. Well, for him, yeah, because he's, mm-hmm. he's perennially, up until recently anyway, uh, 20, 30 goals a year. Mm-hmm. He only got eight last year, but uh, he only played 48 games too. He was hurt for a good chunk of the year. So we'll, I guess we'll see. That, I, that could end up being a steal for Chicago. Yep. <clears throat> Not that that team needs it, man. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. The next free agent signing I have is Kyle Quincy, uh, okay. defenseman, signed with Minnesota, one year, one point two five. So he essentially replaces the defenseman that they traded, and um, obviously a downgrade for them in my mind. Scandella, yep. I think, was a better better defenseman than uh, than he is. But agreed. Agreed. Um, but you know they gotta they gotta put six guys out there so yeah so uh you know not that Quincy's a horrible D but he just uh you know he's 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 gonna be on their bottom pairing probably for sure I'm just scanning over the list to see if there's any big names that signed for low money that I didn't see any as of yet no all right next one I have Radam Verbata right winger yep. signed with Florida for one year 2.5 million a year yeah so he's a nice addition for Florida obviously he was with Phoenix or Arizona before right um was I believe he was the their leading scorer last year wasn't he oh you got me there <laughs> Might have been. Uh, it wasn't OEL was it no I, I think for some reason I'm thinking he was if he wasn't their top scorer he was pretty close 55 mm-hmm. points in 81 games. And, of course, on a very bad Phoenix team, that's not uh, – uh, he's going to be right up there. So if he can even come close to that for Florida, that will be a nice ad for them. Uh, and he essentially probably will end up taking the spot on the roster vacated by Yarmir Yager, who reports are saying that he will not be coming back to Florida mm-hmm. for certain. So, All right, next one I have uh, Mr. Fourth Line, Dominic Moore. Yep. Signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs. For one year, one million. Been bouncing around his last three years in the yep. NHL. <laughs> yeah, he has. But he's a good player. He he's, played he, well for the Bruins last year. I was very absolutely. happy with his play. Yeah, yep. He did. Good penalty killer. Right. Yeah. Yep. Good locker room guy. Good locker room Nicholas. guy. Good yep. good good guy for the fourth line for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Anders Nielsen, goaltender, signed with the Vancouver Canucks for two years at two point five. Right. I uh, believe he uh, will be their backup. That is correct, right? Uh, probably so. With uh, with Ryan Miller moving to Anaheim, um, that that's probably. I'm trying to think who their starter is going to be. Longo uh, is still no. Longo's not there. Markstrom. Uh, Markstrom. Markstrom. Yep. That's right. Yep. Markstrom is their goal. Is their starter. So yeah. you might see a tandem there. Right. I mean, Vancouver's definitely slated to not have a very good season coming up. Oh, sure. yeah. They, they are going to be a team that's going to be struggling for a little while. I lost my place. Holy cow, where was I? 
Uh, let's see. We just finished Dominic Moore. Okay, Anders Nielsen. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're on to Mark Edward Vlasic, the pickle. Yeah. <laughs> I I, uh, I was he, shocked at the amount of money he's going to make. Whew, man, eight years, oh, eight years, seven million a year. Is he a seven million dollar a year player? No, he is not. They def I, they definitely paid big dollar to keep him in in because he stays he stays in San Jose. Yeah, so. I, I I I don't understand that one quite frankly. Yeah, that one does seem a little pricey to me. He was making 4.25 before. Right. So he got almost a $3 million raise. And and he's got no movement clause on top of that for the first oh. five years of this contract. Okay. I'm not understanding that one, Wayne. Yeah, that that one seems to be a bit much to me. I mean, go, yeah, obviously good stay-at-home guy, but uh, San Jose might have just put themselves in a bit of a pickle, so to speak. <laughs> 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 on that one <laughs> that was a very good one <laughs> all right speaking of san jose martin jones re uh re-upped his contract signed a six-year deal 5.75 million um i always am cautious about spending top dollar on goaltending just because goalies these days they are the difference between the you know, the, the number one goalie and the number 30 goalie in the league yeah. is is really, really subtle in some yeah. cases. Um, you know, obviously Martin Jones is, is a very good goalie. Um, probably one of the top, I would say, 10, 15 goalies in the league. And he could get better. So San Jose locks him up. I guess they just don't want to have to worry about the goaltending position. Right. For a while. So they've got him locked up for the next six years. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ducks made uh, another move. Cam Fowler got signed for, listen to this, think of it, talking about expensive defensemen. Eight years, $6.5 million per year. That's a little high. <laughs> That's a little high, but not as bad of a move as it is with Mark Edward Vlasic. Because I, yeah. I, Cam Fowler is very good. And, you know, he the, Anaheim kept him. They that's what that's a case where they really didn't want to lose him um, because you're going to get more offense for out of Cam Fowler than you would have for Velasic. Very good point. Uh, and, and if left open to the open market, you know, wasn't he he was a restricted or unrestricted? I believe he was unrestricted. He was highly, highly sought. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, his name bounced around a lot of teams and. uh Anaheim did good to keep him. They may have paid a little more than they than than he's worth, but not terrible. Yep. Yep. You're um, right. Oh no, Fowler, I believe, was restricted. He's twenty he's only twenty five. Yeah. I don't think you can be unrestricted till you're twenty seven. Right. So So yeah. So the Ducks nail nailed down one of their probably top pairing defensemen there for the next uh, eight years. All right. Ryan Miller, we spoke about him a little bit earlier. He signed on to be the Ducks backup. Right. Uh two years, two million dollars a year. And right. and I and I've noticed that a couple of teams are doing this. Carolina is attempting it. Uh, here, the Ducks are doing it. Uh, they're they're trying to make sure that their one and two goalies are both very very good and very very reliable. Ryan right. Miller is thirty six years old. He's not going to be a starter anymore, um, but he right. can be a very very reliable backup if um, their number one guy goes down. For an extended period of time, Miller can step in and, and carry the team for a while. Absolutely. So, so, um, so that's not right. a that's not a bad move for them. Uh, right. Obviously, uh, Gibson is still going to be the starter there, mm -hmm. but uh, but Miller will be a nice backup. And they also signed Rito Berra too um, as a number three goalie. But Berra they only got uh, for seven hundred thousand a year. So that's uh, you know their goaltending position is short up at least for the next season or so. Anyway. <laughs> That's that's for sure. All right. Next one I got would be I wanted to mention it too, uh, even though it doesn't meet our minimum standards. A Boston Bruins signing, Kenny Agostino. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a twenty five year old left winger. Uh he signed for one year eight seventy five. And the thing that kind of piqued my interest there, he was the MVP of the American Hockey League last year. Oh. Um, did not know that. And he was kind of stuck. Uh, who did he play for? I read a story. Or he was he was with the St. Louis Blues last year, mm -hmm. and he was just stuck on the depth chart down uh, St. Louis Blues roster or whatnot. And the Blues, I guess, never really gave him a shot uh, at playing in the NHL. He only played seven games last year in the NHL, mm -hmm. but had three points. Mm -hmm. uh, for Chicago Wolves, he had eighty-three points in sixty-five games. Uh. 
So the Boston Bruins signed him on kind of as more of a depth guy for them, but um, they're going to give him a shot at playing. Um, at least this is what I'm reading anyway. They're going to give him a shot at, at playing um, possibly third line, maybe even some second line minutes or some power play two minutes because uh, they say he's really talented. He's fast, very good player. He just hasn't been given the right opportunity yet in the NHL. And apparently the Bruins are willing to give him a shot. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, for Bruins fans out there to uh, see if uh, this guy can do anything uh, with the Bruins. So very interesting good. to look at. All right. Next one. Benoit Pouliot, Buffalo Sabres signed yeah. a one year, $1.15 million contract. Right. Um, it's a guy who's been bouncing around a little bit, uh, right. but uh, you know he's he's a good depth signing for Buffalo. Yep, could score twenty goals a year if they if the, with the right season he with, did with the Rangers. With the right season, the right situation, yeah, he could. Yep. All right, Martin Hansel, center, signed with Dallas, three years, four point seven five a year. Uh, Dallas is quietly assembling a very good team. Yes, they're, they are. They're going to be a very tough team this year. They are, and that's a very good signing. Yeah. I think that's a good signing for them. I think uh, that's a little pricey for, for a guy. Uh, like maybe slightly. You know, he's at least three, three and a half, maybe even four million dollars a year. Uh, Martin Hansel's a good player. Made three point one last year. So yeah. he scored. Uh, he he missed a lot of the year last year though, didn't he? Well, no, he played seventy one games. Yeah, he, two different teams. He got traded. He was a right. rental for Minnesota, and then he before that he was with uh, Arizona. Phoenix. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I saw that. I'm like, eh, it's a little on the pricey side was my first reaction, but, but let's make no mistake. Anybody that you sign on July 1st, you're going to overpay for no matter what team you are. That's right. just the nature of free agency. So, right. um, so that's, I guess the way it is. Uh, all right. Next one, Dallas again, Tyler Pitlick, right winger signed three years, 1 million a year. So three years, $3 million total, yep. um, depth player for them. Uh, next one I saw was, uh, Andre Pavlik yep. goaltender signed with the Rangers one year, 1.3, right. obviously replacing Auntie Ranta as the backup. That, uh, would, that would be a definite downgrade in my opinion. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. There's no question. That's a downgrade. Um, they've only got him for one year. Uh, and Scott Halverson, who is uh, formerly, who was formerly with the Sioux city Greyhounds, uh, and now is the Starting goalie for the Connecticut uh, Whale is, I, I think they're touting him to come on board in the NHL at some point. Oh, okay. Uh, so got, so got a Pavlik, prospect. Yeah. Pavlik may be, they're going to test the waters on that. Yeah. And that may be a swap at some point in the year. They, uh, you, may, you may see them putting Pavlik through waivers if he, if they got a minor leaguer coming up, a prospect yep. coming up that ends up playing well enough to stick with the team. Right. Yep. You could see Pavlik on waivers. All right. Um, now we spoke about Ryan Murphy a little while ago. I just saw on the list he's on this list. He signed with uh, Minnesota on a one-year seven hundred thousand dollars contract. So he got he got traded from Carolina to Calgary. The next oh, day, okay. Calgary bought him out, making yeah. him an unrestricted free agent. And now he signs on as a defenseman with Minnesota, uh, one year seven hundred thousand. Just a just a gamble move for Minnesota. There, he's a former first round pick, so you never know. That change of scenery might do him some good, and he might wake up and start playing uh, like a first-round pick again. Right. If he does, that'll be a steal for them. And that'll right. be another one just like Jordan Stahl. Yep. Nate Thompson, uh, center, with uh, signed with the Ottawa Senators. Two years, 1.65 per year. Uh, so he's a nice depth forward for them. Uh, Brian Elliott, goaltender, yep. signed with Philadelphia Flyers. Two years, 2.75 a year. Right. Now, what does that do to the Hamburglar? <laughs> Probably you puts know. him down into the American League is Andrew what it does. Hansen, I mean, now, either that or he's going down. Because I think he's they think, well, yeah. You yeah know, I mean, uh, Danny Taylor. Brian Elliott's going down because uh, that, that doesn't, I mean, Hammond had all those. Remember Hammond was a, just a... A knockout two yep. years ago with with his play. Yep, because they still and, got Michael Neuverth there. I believe that's correct. I yeah. think I think Brian Elliott and Neuverth will end up being your your um, your two goalies in Philadelphia this year, and they'll probably just let him duke it out to see which one whoever plays better is going to end up the starter there. Yeah, I I was I was thinking that uh, Elliott went to, to to Ottawa. My mistake. Uh, I was looking at the wrong line. No. Yeah. If Elliott ends up. If Elliott ends up playing like he did two years ago, 
um, that'll be a nice signing for Philadelphia. Yeah. If, if he plays no, like that, he did last year, then you know, yeah, he fits in very well. That 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 that'll be good with Neuverth. Philadelphia's track record with goalies in the last several years hasn't been that great. So <laughs> they it's seem true. they seem to be constantly searching for their next starting goalie, and I, I joke with that. Uh, about that with uh, with a guy I know that that I play hockey <laughs> with that he's a Flyers fan. I'm like, all right, who's there going to be their goalie this year? <laughs> and they had Sergei Bobrovsky, isn't that? Yeah, I know. They I had know. him. They had him, and they let him go. Yep. Oh, yep. All right, let's move on to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They signed Matt Hunwick, defenseman, three years, two point two five. He essentially will be taking Ron Hainsey's spot on the roster. In my mind, very good signing. Yep. So. A good uh, five six defenseman for them. Mm, very Mike, good. Michael Del Zotto, former Ranger defenseman, signed with the Vancouver Canucks, two years, three million per year. Seems a little expensive for him, but might be. Yeah, he's. But Vancouver, out. Vancouver needs to, uh, you know, got to put somebody on their roster. That's right. Speaking of Vancouver, Sam Gagne, center right wing, signed with them, three years, three point one per year. He'll be uh, he'll be probably on their second line unless they put him with the Sedins. Right. Although I think they still have uh, Louis Erickson playing with them, doesn't he? Don't, or don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So that's I, a good signing, actually. I think I think Vancouver is going to be a, a bad team until the Sedins decide that they're done playing because they're they still have that team centered around those two, and those two are just they're in the decline and they're getting worse year by year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve Mason. Here's an expensive signing. Goaltender. I could not believe it. Signed with the Winnipeg Jets. Two years, 4.1 per year. Yeah. That that seemed to be very high to me. An overpaid goalie there, I would say. Yeah. Um, although Mason has had his moments where he has played very well. Yep. Um, I, th- that's expensive. Uh, that's expensive for a goalie yep. of this caliber. Yeah, for sure. All right. Justin Schultz, who basically, basically in the playoffs, came, you know, he was a he was a defenseman who was who was showed signs of being a really good player, and then kind of disappeared for a season or two with the Oilers. Uh, came out of nowhere, and uh, you know was a force in the playoffs for the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, yep, um, he had uh, fifty one points last year for the Penguins. I don't know if that's just being on a on a strong team like that, but. Um, I remember when he was coming up with the Oilers, uh, he was highly touted as an offensive defenseman, but never really was able to do that in Edmonton. The, the highest number of points he ever had with Edmonton was 33 points mm-hmm. in a season. And uh, he basically changed teams and got a new awakening. And we got the offensive uh, guy that uh, they were expecting to get out of him last year. So he signs a big contract, re-signing with the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Three years, 5.5 per year. And if he puts up 50 points again the next three years, uh, that's going to be a nice value signing for them. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Not sure about his defensive game, but offensively he'll be, <laughs> he'll be all right. Yeah. All right, next one I have Justin Williams. Mm-hmm. He uh, comes back to Carolina, right winger. Signed a two-year, four point five million per year deal with the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, my first initial thought was definitely uh, a pricey signing, but as far as the Carolina Hurricanes are concerned, it doesn't really matter. They're nowhere near the cap ceiling, so they got money to blow essentially. And he will put fans in the seats. Yep, fans remember him. He was on the Stanley Cup winning team way back in the day, back in two thousand six. Right. Uh, so a lot of fans are very excited that he's coming back. Uh, he brings, he's not really going to be brought back for what he does on the ice per se, although he can provide still um, plenty of offense. What did he have? 27 goals, I think, last year. Yeah. Look, 24 goals last year and 22 the year before that. So if you can still get 20 goals out of him. And I think they will. Yeah. I, I think there's any doubt they'll get 20 goals out of him next year. He'll be a top six. Yep. He'll be he'll be paired with uh, uh, what, you know some of the better forwards that they have, um, but what what he brings to the table is something that Carolina has been missing for a long long time. He brings a winning attitude. Yep. He's a guy that loves to win, hates yep. to lose. Um, Carolina yep. has been Carolina's taken a lot of flack in recent years for having a bunch of guys that, that are 
quote unquote passengers. Yeah. What'd you say to this? He excels when the pressure is high. Yes. Yeah. He does have a, he does have the uh, nickname around here anyway, is Mr. Game seven. Yeah. Cause the year they won the cup, he scored, um, you know, Carolina played more than one game seven that year. And he, he was uh, a force out there in all those game sevens. So, um, so yeah, he'll, he brings, you know, that, that type of, he's that type of player. He's, he's a good locker room guy. He's, he's a guy with plenty of experience in the playoffs. He, he was brought on to basically teach the young kids because Carolina is, if they're not the youngest team in the league, they're certainly one of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was brought on to be the senior guy in the room to, uh, um, you know, kind of take all the, basically this whole team of young players under his wing and, and teach them, wh- you know, what is necessary or what it takes to win at the highest levels. So, right. um, so so that 4.5 is not just for him to produce 20 goals. It's for him to be a, a, a you know, a, a definite leader on this team. And I wouldn't surprise me one bit if they gave him the C this year. Really? Because that job is vacant. They don't have a captain. What happened with Jordan Stahl? Jordan never got the C. Eric had the Eric had the oh, C. That's right. That's and, right. It, that is right. And when he left, they never they never they that's kept they, right. they kept Jordan Stahl as an assistant. They kept Jeff Skinner as an assistant. Uh, Victor Rask has worn the A at times, and I believe even uh, Justin Falk has worn the A, and and all four of those guys may continue to wear the A. But there yeah. is, but there is no captain on this team, and they have been holding off until they have the right guy. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they gave that to Justin Williams. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, I agree with you. I could see him being the captain in a heartbeat. Yep, because he was he was an assistant in Washington, uh, and uh, I don't know. It's He'll be a good guy to have for at least the next couple of years to help bring these young kids into teach them how to be real pros. We'll put it that way Mm -hmm. because Carolina really hasn't had that in recent years. Most of the best players that Carolina has don't know what it's like to play in the playoffs. So that's right. Some of them have never played in the playoffs. Justin Skinner has never been a playoff player. Um, Obviously Jordan Stahl has, but it wasn't with Carolina. Um, So, yeah. So Williams will bring that element to the team. So very good signing for them. And in fact, they did the, um, during the, uh, the prospect game, the prospect game they had in Carolina for the, uh, the development camp was on Saturday, the day of free agency. And they Mm -hmm. announced the signing of Justin Williams during that prospect fans went nuts. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fans fans were very happy from that standpoint. Uh, Wayne, they, a a great move for the, for the hurricanes. Yep. Because he definitely will bring people back uh, to to uh, to the PNC Arena. Yeah, he's a familiar name to those who followed the team back in '06 when they were uh, when they won the cup. So, all round good signing for uh, Carolina. All right, Jonathan Bernier, goaltender, signed with the Avalanche, one year, two point seven five. Uh, he might get a shot at the start job there. Yep. Although they yes. have, although they have said that even with this signing that. Uh, um, Varlamov is going to continue being the starter, but Bernier could give him a run. And that's not, that's not, you know, for a year or two, that's not bad money. Yep. All right. Next one I have, Evgeny Dadunov comes over from the KHL and signs a three-year contract, four point, well, four million a year. So three right. years, 12 million total. Right. As a winger for the Florida Panthers. So that's a nice ad for them. Very nice ad. Yep. And, and, and watch out. He, he was he, he was one of the better players in the KHL in the correct. recent years. All right. Montreal signed defenseman Carl Alsner to a five-year, $4.625 million per year contract. <laughs> <laughs> They're spending some money there. They sure are. I guess they had to... <laughs> they had to replace Alexi Emelin, so... I guess, oh, he's, that, that I guess is, he's their guy. I'm. I am not. Uh, I, I will hesitate to say. I think that's a bad signing. I. I don't think he's worth that. I really don't. Uh, but certainly I, not. I, my words next year. You know. He's certainly not offensively worth that. Right. Maybe defensively he is, but so if he's so if he's a stay-at-home guy and and the older Shea Weber gets, he's more of a stay-at-home guy. Well, now you've got you got Montreal with a team full of stay-at-home defensemen. How are they going to get the puck up to the forwards? <laughs> yeah, and you know, listen, they they the bleeding started uh, in this in this uh, in the draft period and then free agency. Montreal really started bleeding, and they haven't stopped. 
I mean, we're, we'll talk more about, you know, the, the next guy that went down the line. Yep. They should have really shored things up with you know who. Yeah. And uh, but Carl Osner, uh, that just I don't agree with that. That's that's a lot of money to pay for that guy. Yep. And they stuck with him for five years, too. So it's going to be fun to watch the Bruins <laughs> beat up on the Canadians this year. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brian Boyle signed with the New Jersey Devils. He's a forward, of course. Two years, 2.75. He's a nice, yeah. he's another another piece that New Jersey had that's definitely an upgrade for them. Of course, oh, at this absolutely. point, everything's an upgrade for them. So, and, then, and a veteran guy, a tough, tough guy. He can put the puck in the net. Uh, yeah, Brian Boyle all around. I was hoping the Rangers would get him. And of course, I, I work with a guy who is a huge Tampa Bay Lightning fan, and he was hoping he'd go back to the Lightning. From yeah. Toronto, but uh, New Jersey's got a good guy there. Yep. All right, another one, uh, and this one, this one was struck me as kind of funny. We talked about him earlier, Michael Vecchioni. Yep. The the Italian stallion <laughs> <laughs> yeah. signs with Philadelphia. He'll fit right in there. Oh yeah. Uh, two years, nine hundred thousand. So he's another guy. He believe he was a Hobie Baker finalist as well, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes, yep. he was. So we'll we'll be interesting to see. How he does there. He's one of the better players coming out of the college hockey this year. So he'll sign on there. Dmitry Kulikov signed with the uh, Winnipeg Jets defenseman. Yep. Three years, 4.3333 yeah. per year. Yeah. Um, and, and and wouldn't he have been better than Carl Alsner for the Canadians? Take, I mean, 4.3, he would have been worth it. Probably. But, yep. but they didn't get him. No, nope. you know uh, that's a good signing for Winnipeg. Yep, yep, it's not a bad signing at all for them. All right, Scott Hartnell signed a one year with the Nashville Predators. Uh, of course, Hartnell is a, fo- a left winger. Uh, he signed one year, one million. Uh, gave somebody a discount there on that one. Absolutely, I think he. I think he wanted to join a contender. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure if he's won. Has he won a cup? No, 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 he hasn't. He's never won a Stanley Cup, so this this one looks to me like a guy who signed on with a with a Stanley Cup contender in hopes to try to get himself a cup before he retires because he's not getting any younger. That's right, um, but a very good player still. Very good player, yeah. He'll probably be in the third, fourth line somewhere in that area. He's not a top six anymore, um, yeah. but uh, uh, he'll be a nice depth add for uh, Nashville, making them even better than they already are. All right. Most fight too. Yep. Lance Boma, uh, forward, basically plays all three positions in the forward. Signed with Chicago, one year, one million dollars. Uh, he was a name that was being tossed around as, as some guy, uh, some teams that wanted to add a depth guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Not a big, not a big point getter, um, but uh, he's uh, he'll be a good third, fourth liner for them. Uh, Nick Cousins signed with Arizona, forward, two years, one million dollars. Uh, he'll probably get plenty of playing time on that team. It's going to be a bad team again this year, I'm, I think. They're going to be playing a lot of their young players. All right. Uh, another Nashville signing, which which made me go wow, <laughs> uh, Nick Bonino, yep. who's a playoff star for uh, Pittsburgh the last couple of years, mm-hmm. signed a four-year deal, 4.1 per year, to play with the Nashville Predators. So he must have liked uh, the atmosphere in Nashville when they were playing him in the finals. Yes, he decided <laughs> he decided he wanted to play for them. Yeah, and uh, to take that a step further, I saw him on NHL tonight. Uh, they actually talked to him uh, live, and he is very excited to be in Nashville. Uh, he, his family they're they're looking forward to this, and he is like a kid in a candy store. When they talk to him about him moving to Nashville and all of this, uh, he, he's he's very pleased and set up well and. Nashville gets a good player. Yep, yep. Nice third, probably a third liner, maybe fourth, mm-hmm. depending on what uh, how everything shakes out there. All right. Next one is probably the biggest unrestricted free agent signing of the season, and that is uh, Mr. Kevin Shattenkirk, who, yeah. is, who is very highly touted. And all the tweets that I saw basically said that uh, he was it was coming down to either New York or Boston on, oh, where, really? on where he would end up. Yep. And he eventually signs with the Rangers four right. years, six point six five million dollars a year. Yeah. I think that is a fantastic signing for the Rangers. Yeah, He'll be I, the- I, I think it is, too, Wayne. Uh, what immediately came into my mind was 
you know it really hurt me to see Keith Yandel go. Yep. And here we are. We get a guy back back on the team, and he can put he as a defenseman he can score. Yep. Uh, so we got a we got a guy back that virtually replaces Keith Yandel in my mind, and uh, a guy who wants to be in New York. Grew up as a Rangers fan his whole life, so yep. I'm very pleased with that. Um, yeah, originally from New Rochelle, New York. So grew yeah. up a Ranger fan, and and he said in an interview that he, you know, he he always pictured himself being a Ranger someday, and uh, he finally got his opportunity. But apparently, Boston was making a play to try to get him as well. But, um, and I've also heard reports that he was offered. Uh, contracts for higher money to play for other teams, but he chose to take less money, less term to become a ranger. Wow. I, uh, so very good. So he'll be a nice ad for, uh, for New York on the blue right. line there. Uh, speaking of former Rangers, J- Dan Girardi ended up in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Two years, 3 million a year. So he's obviously not going to be in the top pairing down there, but uh, because they have, you know, some pretty good defensemen already in Tampa. They've got Victor Hedman, Anton Strahlman, Brady Coburn. So he still could end up in the top top four, but he's a top six at least. And uh, remains to be seen how he how he does down there. Um, his play yeah. tailed off there the last year or so in the, in New York. So yep. this will probably be his last big big contract. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, another penguin jump shipped. Uh, Chris Kunix ended up in Tampa on a yep. one year on a one year two million dollar contract. Yeah. And uh, it, so he, this is a guy who who is not playing as well as he once was. He's definitely on the downswing of his career, but uh, right. he'll and be a twi- nice depth add. And, and I think Tampa Bay is going to be a very good team this year with some of these veterans they've signed on. I agree. All right, Toronto Maple Leafs have signed on another veteran. Ron Hainsey signed a two-year, $3 million contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. I think da- uh, Toronto is dangerously good. They are very – I mean, obviously they made the playoffs last year, and I really don't think that's a fluke. I think they'll be back this year. I agree. Um, All that talent, the young players that they have, uh, put Toronto in the playoffs again. Yep, yeah, yeah, I think so. And obviously Ron Hainsey feels the same way. He signed with them. And he's probably from that area anyway, so it probably moves him closer to home. No, he's American. He's from Polton, Connecticut. Okay. For some reason, I thought he was Canadian. All right. Next one. Mike Camilleri mm-hmm. signs back with L.A., a team that he once played for. One year, $1 million. So he will help a team that, uh, if he can still put out any offense anyway, he'll help a team that has uh, had a hard time scoring goals in recent years. Right. Uh, he might be able to get him for 40, maybe 50 points. 50 might be a bit of a stretch, but he should be able to get him 40 points anyway. Mm-hmm. So another uh, veteran player for L.A. They sign those kind of guys, don't they? They seem to do, yeah. And, I, and make good use of them. Yeah, but he's not a guy that's going to put them back in the playoffs, I don't think. No, no, you're right. All right, another former Penguin, Trevor Daly, signed with the Detroit Red Wings yeah. for three years, 3.167 per year. I think he'll fit in very good there, Wayne. Yep. And that's the type of team where he can excel, you know. Uh, might be the last big contract for him. Yeah, he's getting up there in age. <laughs> I think <laughs> he'll sure. get a lot out of him, you know. Yep. Detroit's a team that's that's in a bit of a rebuilding stage, and they do need veteran players to help with the young kids. And I think that'll ultimately be his role there. Mm-hmm. All right. Patrick Marlowe is another big name that has been bandied about around the league. He ended up signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. There was a lot of speculation of where him and Joe Thornton might end up. Cause they were both ended up being free agents this year. And uh, Marlowe ends up with Toronto three years, 6.25 million a year. Yeah. That's expensive. That is um, but if you think about it, all those young kids that Toronto has, they're all in the very early part of their entry level deal. So Toronto has money to spend right now, at least right. until they have to re-sign Marner and re-sign Matthews. You know, right. once those guys earn their big boy contracts, uh, they're not going to have room for a Patrick Marlowe and under the cap anymore. So, right. um, and, and I think Patrick Marlowe is a guy that, uh, has got a couple years left of, of, Good production as far as a goal scorer. Yep. Uh, and it's not a bad move. The thing that should be concerning for um, uh, for uh, Leafs fans, though, is with this being a three-year, I'm not sure when Mar- Marner and – Marner and Matthews are the two that – two guys that could end up with big contracts when their entry-level deals are up. Um, they could run into a problem there with – won't be for the next two years, but I think – 
that third year. Let me look it up real quick. Yeah, Marner, he's an RFA in 1920, and Matthews is also an RFA in 1920. Uh, so they could run into a bit of a problem. They don't have, although they don't have a lot of play, a lot of money committed that season as of right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but those guys are going to earn their big boy contracts that season, which will be uh, which will be Marlowe's third season with the team, and Marlowe has a no movement clause, so they could put themselves into a bit of a pickle there. Right. Interesting to see how that develops. But for the next two years, anyway, uh, Toronto has, they basically got house money with with Marner and Matthews signed to entry-level deals and putting out at the production that they're putting out. Nylander as well, although Nylander's only got one more season left before they have to re-sign him to a big boy contract. Those three players right there are essentially the core of that rebuilding team. Absolutely. And, uh, um, you know, until those three guys end up with their get out of their entry level and into more expensive contracts. Um, Toronto can basically spend free willy nilly probably for the next two years anyway. Mm-hmm. So, all right, moving on. This one was uh, pretty surprising. Yeah. Uh, Montreal signs goaltender Carey Price to a contract extension. Now he's still under contract through this upcoming season. Mm-hmm. So they re-signed him. They extended his contract another eight years yep. for $10.5 million a year, which equals, uh, or at the time, equaled uh, Patrick Kane and, and Jonathan Taves as the highest paid players in the NHL. Right. On an on a average annual value, anyway. Right. Cap so it. so they, have, they have locked up Carey Price through the 2025-26 season, which, Actually, my, yeah. which is my math is correct. That would be our tenth year of podcasting. Would I? Would, am I correct? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I uh, I listen. That that that's uh, as far as Montreal uh, and their and their because they are really a loser in this. You know, they they did not turn. They they have not done well uh, in free agency or the end of the season here as far as swapping of players and moving pl- players in and out. But that's a good move because. It, the point can be made that he is the best goalie in the world. Um, yep. If he's not, he's in the top two. And uh, so they have to keep him. Uh, that's their franchise. Yep. And they have to keep him. So that, 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 you know, and, that, and Hey, they're going to pay that kind of money. You know, he's worth it. Uh, eight years. I don't know, but you know, he's, he'll be, he's, he'll be 38 years old. And when this contract ends, right. So I, they've essentially locked him up for the rest of his career at this point. That's that's, that's right. Um, I don't know. I tend to think that 10.5 for a goalie is a bit much. Um, of course, I think, you know, the Bruins are overpaying for Tuka Rask at $7 million a year. So, <laughs> yeah. like I said, I, I, I seem to think the goaltending position, the difference from, a, you know, a great goalie to a good goalie is, um, is not that much. So, you know, I get it. They're signing him. They don't have to worry about the goalie position going forward. They essentially can ignore goalies in the draft for the next four to five years. Right. They don't even have to pick any um, just because they've got Carey Price locked up. So, uh, and you know, you know how, you know how popular goalies are in Montreal. They, they do like their goalies. So yes, they do. uh, Especially if they're French speaking, but um, I don't know. I think this may handcuff the, the Canadians going forward because now whatever the salary cap is, you've got what? 10, 15% of your salary cap locked up in one player. Right. That's it's gonna that's gonna handcuff them a little bit. It's certainly gonna prevent them from being able to sign a good number two goalie because you're not gonna lock up another two or three million in a in a backup goalie. That's a very good point. The other hand is you know Carey Price without Carey Price, forget it. Montreal is they yeah. are they not, they'd be one of the worst teams in the in the East. So they have to have Carey Price on that team. Yeah. So they were in a bit of a Mark Edward Vlasic. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, and I know Carey Price keeps talking how he wants to win, and he thinks Montreal is, you know, the best place for him to win. Of course, you know, any team that Carey Price is on is going to be a contender anyway. But because um, he, he is that good, but um, I don't know. I, you know, Montreal can have him. I guess, in my opinion, <laughs> at yeah. that at that price, he, they can have him. Yeah. I'll I'll settle for you know Tuka Rask and take my three million dollars and spend that on a forward that can beat Carey Price on a regular basis. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll still have Tuka. <laughs> 
So that's, I guess that's just the point I was making on that. All right, let's move on. It's a big signing for Montreal. Canadians fans are happy. We're happy for them, I guess. <laughs> right. All right. Moving on. Joe Thornton yeah. uh, decided to stay with the Sharks. Stayed on a one-year deal, $8 million per year. Yeah, that's uh, – well, we'll see. He's not worth $8 million, Wayne. No, no, not, not even not. close. Um, he scored seven goals last year. Yeah. Now I get it. Joe Thornton brings more to to the game than goals. You know his his value is not in goals that he puts in. It's goals that he sets up. Yeah. And he, can, he consistently leads the league. I think in uh, assists almost every year. I mean he's his last several years he's had uh, forty three assists, sixty three, forty nine, sixty five, thirty three. He's kind of like the modern day Wayne Gretzky. One of the best playmakers in the game, yes. for sure. Yeah. So obviously his his value isn't in how many goals he scores, but for a guy making eight million a year, you want more than seven goals. Oh yeah. So that's, that's at the very least twenty goals a year. So uh, so I think uh, I think San Jose and I think knowing that they were going to lose Patrick Marlowe, I think panicked a little bit and overpaid Joe Thornton to stay. So oh, speaking of which, did you see him and? <laughs> The ESPN body issue with him and uh, I, I did see that him and and uh, Burns, Brent Burns, yeah, yeah, took they off had, all the clothes and they had the 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 beard that went all the way down basically to to their toes. <laughs> yeah. that, oh, was, that was God. an interesting interesting set of photographs right there. <laughs> Those two guys are a couple of clowns when they get together. All right, let's move on. Evgeny Kuznetsov decided to stay with the Capitals. Actually, he was only, he was a restricted free agent, so he had no choice. Uh, he signs on for eight years, seven point eight per year. Okay, now if he produces, if he produces as Evgeny Kuznetsov could produce, then that's a good signing. Uh, he's got to he's got to bring it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? At 25 years old, that's a good signing if he produces. Um. I but think at that price, I think that that price, he's got to score more than twenty goals a year. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Which is all he's been able to manage thus far. Um, although I think this move, this shows us that the Capitals are kind of shifting this, the center, centering their team around. They're still centering it around Ovechkin, but I think yeah. Kuznetsov is their future centerpiece. I think. I agree. I, I agree. Uh, Which could end he, up biting him if he doesn't produce. He's got to produce. Yep. I mean, that, that definitely going to be a pressure cooker there on him. He's got to produce. Yep. So, all right. Alice Hemsky, right winger, signed with the Montreal Canadiens. One year, one million. Yep. Nice depth forward for them. He's not going to put a whole lot out there on the on the score sheet, but uh, it'll be a good good third third fourth line guy for them. I don't know why my dog is barking. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, next uh, player is Xavier Willette, signed defenseman, signed with the uh, Detroit Red Wings, two years, one point two five per year. He was with them before, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes. So he just decided to stay with them. Uh, oh, he's only twenty three. He had no choice. He was restricted. Uh, let's see, Alexander Radulov, another big name, yep. Yep. who slipped through Montreal's fingers, ends up in Dallas, signs a five year, six point two five million per year. Another one of those. He'd better produce. He better produce, <laughs> and you know his days in the KHL are behind him with this contract. Yep. Um, he had a good season I, last year, fifty four points. You you think that Montreal just wasn't going to pony up that kind of money? Um, the reports I saw out of Montreal centered around him and um, uh, who's their defenseman there? Shea Weber? No. Kozlov? No. Shit. Oh, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um, I'm having trouble yeah. with the names tonight. I know who you're talking about. Andre Markov. 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 Um, yes. The report I saw out of Montreal was that. Montreal's offer to both Markov and Radulov was firm and final. Okay. And um, even there was even a quote I saw that, that uh, Bergevin said, hey, there's not going to be any negotiation. This is our offer to these guys. Now, is that because they, were, they knew they were going to be signing Carey Price to $10 million a year? And they want to make sure um, you know, they don't overpay for these two Russian guys? Um, I don't know, but... But uh, Markov still remains unsigned, but Radulov ended up in Dallas. So Let me tell you, I, Alexander Radulov had a great season for Montreal. Not just a good season. He, he was very, very good for them. 
And and here's what makes makes Dallas scary. What if they were to put Radulov on a line with Jamie Benn and uh, Tyler Sagan? Yeah, yeah, can you imagine that? That might be the best it, line in the NHL. It might happen. It could happen. I mean, it really could if, happen. If Radulov comes out, and then if they could, plays, if they can convince Nakushkin to come back over. Oh God, because Nakushkin Dallas is looking better and better. Yep, trading gonna, place the Blackhawks. They're gonna be they're gonna be a contender for sure oh, yep. in the West because they got a decent goalie in Ben Bishop again. Oh. Knock on wood, Bishop stays healthy. Um, they've shored up that that weakness. Uh, Hitchcock comes back to coach them. They've they've got an explosive offense, even with just ha- having Radulov on the team adding to what they already had. But if they can convince Nikushkin to come back because he was a highly touted prospect um, yep. who basically bolted before he became before he had his breakout year, but the year he decides to come back here, which probably will eventually happen, um, mm-hmm. it's going to, wow, it's going to make Dallas even better. All right, here's the next one that's kind of interesting. He's It's under our, our scope, but at 875000 uh on a one-year contract, Neil Yakupov signs on with the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, this could be end up end up being a win win for everybody. Gives Yakupov one last chance to prove himself as a as a serviceable NHL player. I mean, what three four years ago he was the first overall pick. Yeah, and just has not produced at on on any level right since coming over. There was a lot of rumors that he was going to go back to the KHL this year. Um, but uh, the Colorado Avalanche gave him one last chance. So in my mind, we'll, we'll steal from a New York saying, if he can't make it there, he can't He can't make it anywhere in the <laughs> NHL, all right? <laughs> oh. Colorado's the worst team in the league by quite a margin right now, and uh, he signs on to be Colorado Avalanche. Now, the fact that, you know, initially I'm thought, what is what is Sackick doing signing on Yakupov, who obviously hasn't produced and has yet to prove that he can produce? But then when I saw he only signed him for 875, you know, for a one year contract, I'm like, you know what? It's a good gamble move. Yeah, it really is. Yep. He's really got nothing to lose there. No, absolutely not. The guy could turn around and, and, and have a great season if and it'd be a great move. If he doesn't do well, he can bury him in the minors. Put him on waivers. No one will probably pick him up, and you know his contract will be done at the end of the at the end of the season. They can be done with him. But if he if he decides to, um, you know the the reports I'm getting with Yakupov is it's just flat out work ethic. It's just not there. He came in. He was the number one overall pick and thought he could coast his way into the league, and he just hasn't done that. So uh, if he decides to, you know, at this point it's up to Yakupov. If he decides he wants to be a pro, mm-hmm. he can be a very good player. But it's all up to him, right? So it's that it's that it's that typical Russian stigma that that you see. Yeah, you know they they he's just the latest example of that of that reputation that Russian players have mm-hmm. of being you know not the hardest working players in the world. All right, here's another one, Ranger. Yeah, this one came over. Actually, I saw it yesterday, but it looks like he signed on the fourth. Uh, signed David Deharnay. Yep. To, to a one-year, $1 million contract. Now, Edmonton's let go of some players, haven't they? Yeah. And uh, well, they're making they're making room for... For what we're going to talk about here in a yeah. minute. Or two. Yep. But, I, you know, um, my feeling on it right off the bat, um, he, he's, you know, for $1 million, I think it's a good move. A veteran player, uh, he's 30 years old at $1 million, a good move. Yep. And we'll see how it goes. One year deal. He has he has a few fifty point seasons in his past, so yep. if he can recapture that, that'll be a steal. Absolutely. Not that that might happen, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> don't expect that to happen. But hey, why not? It's not a yep. bad move for them. He's kind of undersized, so if, if the Rangers, uh, but he might have the speed to be able to keep up with guys like Zuccarello and you know some of the yep. Jesper Foss and some of the better you know speedy forwards that they have. But you think about it, you got Taylor Hall, Jordan Everly, David DeHarnay, Nail Yakupov. Yep. You, you can go on. They they they've let some players go here. Yep. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Yep. So. Uh, All right. Next one I have is a Vegas signing. Uh, signed Oscar Lindbergh. I actually think he's a player that they picked up in the uh, expansion draft, but he right. was a restricted free agent, so they re-signed him to a two-year, one point seven per year contract. So he'll probably be on the top two lines, one of the top two lines for them. Yeah. Andre Burakovsky signed with the Washington Capitals. Uh, this is obviously a restricted free agent signing. He's only 22 years old. Signed a two-year, $3 million per year contract with the Capitals. 
Um, so he'll be a part of their future for sure. Well, at least for the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, a a uh, entry level contract, Clem Clauston. Clem Coston, sorry. He is the first player from the 2017 draft class to sign a contract. And he signed okay. with the um, St. Louis Blues, a three year, 925 per year entry level. So he signed at the, the, max- the rookie maximum yep, for three years, 925 per year. Uh, and so the St. Louis Blues obviously think he's going to make the team right off the bat. Um, now the question is, if he doesn't end up making the team, does he go back to Russia? Because he didn't play in juniors. Hmm. I'm oh, not sure. Wow. I'm not sure how it works with European players. He might have to go back to Russia <laughs> and play over there on a, on a junior team in one of the junior leagues over there because he didn't play in the KHL. He played in one of their junior leagues. Mm. So it remains to be seen. But obviously, them signing him. They think that they've got a player in him that, that he'll probably make the team right off the bat. Not sure if he'll be the last player from this year's draft class to be signed, but he is the first. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the next player I have, Jesper Foss, signed with the Rangers. Three years, 1.85 per year. Yeah, that's, good. that's a very good signing for them. And uh, a utility guy. He wears a lot of hats. Fast skater. Uh, God, Living up to his fun. name, huh? Yes, he <laughs> is. He's very fast. And I, you know, uh, he's been a perennial guy there with his, uh, Alain Vigneault, uh, has, has fit him into the system very well. So that, that's a great signing. I'm very pleased with that. Now he's going to miss a part of the season, right? With his injury. That's correct. The, the initial part of the season, I believe, if I, if I understood it correctly. Yeah. Okay. Um, but he, he, he should be back. So. Yep. All right. Good. Next one I have, Zach Hyman signs with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Four years, 2.25 per year. Yep. Uh, be a nice uh, forward for them. He's obviously a restricted free agent signing, uh, so he'll be going back to Toronto. Hey, I, I, I wanted to ask you about this one. Yeah. Sebastian Ajo. Oh, yeah. Yep, they re-signed him. Oh, no, we're not talking about the same Sebastian Ajo. <laughs> you, almost got, you almost confused me on that one. There's actually, I was actually looking at this last night. There, there's, there's two, and this is going to confuse everybody now. There's two. There are now two Sebastian Ajos playing in the NHL. Isn't that something? Yeah. That doesn't seem like a common name to me. No, and and they're from two different countries too. This Sebastian Ajo, who signed with the Islanders to a three-year, seven hundred seventy thousand dollar per year contract. Uh, he's a defenseman. He's from Sweden. Okay. Whereas the Sebastian Ajo that plays for the Carolina Hurricanes is from it's Finland. Finn, it's Finn. Yeah. yeah, so okay, um, yeah, that's going to be confusing, especially if they I, end up playing against each other. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, Wayne is definitely going to say something about that. Yeah, but okay, now I understand. Yep, it's a different Sebastian Aho, so a different guy. Yep, Aho. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, don't get me started on that. I get so annoyed with the with the, with the Carolina Hurricanes announcers whenever Aho scores a goal. Aha, Aho! I'm like, oh god, come up with something a little bit better than that. Come on, they do it every time he scores a goal. Aha, Aho! <laughs> like, really? Is that a... <laughs> get to come up with something better. All right, next one is a big one. Uh, Connor McDavid. Yep. Uh, Signed his first big boy contract, and it actually doesn't take effect until a year from now uh, because he still has one more year left on his entry level deal. Uh, But he signed an extension, eight years, $100 million contract, averaging with an average annual value of $12.5 million per year. So that makes Connor McDavid now the highest paid player in the NHL in terms of cap hit. So this was a Big, big signing for Edmonton, and it, they were talking about it for a couple of weeks. Yep. Oh, don't you think they had to do it? I mean, he wins the the you know the the Hart Trophy. Yeah, he, he wins, wins the Art Ross, the Hart Trophy. Wins the Art Ross. Takes all the hardware home. Wins the Lindsay. Yep. Right. Yep. He. he I mean, it, he basically he, wins all the all the offensive. He's whatever. a phenomenal player. He is the future of the NHL. So they had to do that. I and you know. Twelve and a half million dollars five years from now, if he keeps playing the way he's playing, that's gonna, that's not gonna be that, you know, that, that it's a, I, I mean, they had to do it. So yeah, he he's signed put, on. He's now locked up through the twenty five twenty six season. Uh, so he has one year remaining on his entry level deal at nine twenty five, and then, and then Edmonton will be paying uh, substantially. <laughs> 
through yes. the nose for him. Yes, but every bit of worth it. I mean, this is only his second year in the year, and he already hit the 100-point plateau. Yeah. And there's a lot of people thinking that he could end up reaching, and it'll be interesting to see if he can, reaching the 1,000-point plateau before the end of this contract. Yep. And he'll still only be, what? 28. 28 when this contract is up. Got another one coming. Another <laughs> big boy contract. That one will probably be 15 a year or something <laughs> like that. By then, the salary cap will be $100 plus million dollars a year, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, this is obviously the big signing of the year. And now Edmonton has turned their sights on Leon Dreisaitl. That, see, that's, that's the next thing is... They've got to build their team around Connor McDavid. Yep. Well, and right said, now, they're, they're, yeah, they're essentially going to be building it around Drysidle and McDavid because right. the the reports out of Edmonton is that Drysidle is probably going to earn a contract in excess of six to seven per year as well. Wow. So, um, yeah, but, they're they're okay. essentially putting all their all their eggs in McNuggets basket. So, <laughs> well, you know, you know. Um, uh, you know, Shirelli can do it. You know, he can he can build the, build the team. I I don't think there's any doubt about that. They just got to pick the right pieces, chemistry wise. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do this, and this is going to be a fun team to watch. But they do need to be be picking players uh, that 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 are built around those those guys. Yep. And Drysaddle's a must. They have to have him. They have to have Leon Drysaddle for sure. So, um, and with Cam Talbot in that, uh, it, it's going to be an interesting team to watch. They're they are going to remain a contender and a playoff team, in my opinion. So, uh, e- even with the players that have left there in the last month, two months, yep. you know, Jordan Eberle, Benoit Pouliot, David DeHarnay, there's been there's been an exodus out of there. And you see why with, with this signing, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to watch Edmonton. Yep, well, they're going to be a good team for years to come as long as... McDavid is around. I can say anything about it. All right. Next one I have. We only got a few left. Uh, Alex Galchenyuk signed uh, an extension with Montreal. Three years, 4.9 per year. Uh, there was a lot of talk that he was going to be traded. Um, but with that kind of signing, it tells me that they've decided to keep him around for a while. So. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll be a centerpiece in there. Uh, not the centerpiece, but he'll be one of their better forwards uh, going forward. Philip Grubauer signed a one-year, $1.5 million contract to back up Braden Holtby in Washington. So Grubauer decides to stay around. Uh, curious why it's only one year. I guess maybe he's just biding his time until uh, maybe possibly next year a, a starting job opens up that he might give a, have a shot at. Because this right. is a guy that could potentially be a starter. That's correct. Given the right opportunity. All right, the last couple here, uh, Mark Pizik, defenseman, signed with Florida for three years, 2.73 per year. Uh, he'll be a centerpiece in their defense going forward. And then finally, Brett Ritchie, right winger, signed with Dallas, two years, 1.75 per year. Now, there's tons of other players we didn't talk about, obviously. Uh, we didn't talk about any of the guys that were... Uh, that are going to be filling depth spots on different rosters uh, throughout the league. Again, if you want to see the list, go to the show notes. There's a link, and you can uh, see the full list and see uh, what your team added. And as we get closer to the regular season, we're going to go and do a team-by-team preview anyway with everybody, uh, with all the teams, so see which teams added what and which didn't. Um, but for now, I made a list last night of what I'm going to call free agent winners, free agent losers, and and free agent uh, teams that's standing pat. Um, and what this basically is, is my opinion, to start with, on hmm. which teams... Now, I'm only considering free agent signings. I'm not talking about the trades. So right. some, of these, some, of, some of these teams that I'm calling a winner might turn out to be a loser because of the trades they made. Right. Or vice versa. They may right. be losers now and turn out to be winners because of the trades they made. This is just talking right. about free agent signings as of July, what's Sixth. today? July yeah. 6th. So yeah. the first five days of free agency, there's still a lot of time to go. Sure. Granted, a lot of the big names are, are off the board, uh, but there are still a number of names that are still available. Like, like for example, just to name of some of the guys that are still available. Uh, Andre Markov, yep. uh, Thomas Vanek, Yarmir Yager, Mike Fisher, Brian Gianta, Matt Cullen, P.A. Parento, UC Jokinen, Jerome McGinley, Shane Doan, Mark Streit, Mike Ribeiro, Daniel Winnick, Alex Chason, Drew Stafford, Laurie Karpikoski, uh, Cody Franson, Scotty Upshall, Dennis Weidman, Rene Bork. These, those are just the top 
20 names that I have uh, that were available that are still available to be signed. Uh, of course, a lot of these guys are getting on in years. Some of these guys are probably going to retire. Um, but uh, but those are the, some of the names that are still officially available that haven't been signed. But as of right now, here are the teams that I think have done, that have made themselves better through free agency. Uh, Hurricanes, Stars, Red Wings, Panthers, Kings, Predators, Devils, Rangers, Maple Leafs, Canucks, and Jets. You have any you want to add to that list? Uh, I, I, uh, it remains to be seen, uh, but p- perhaps, perhaps the, uh, the Buffalo Sabres. Okay. Uh, and, and, and it's going to depend on a number of things. Have they shored up their coach? They got, a, they yes. got a new coach, don't they? they? Yeah. There, there are no coaching vacancies right now as, as far as I know. It, it's going to remain to be seen, but th- they may be a team that is a winner in this, in this, uh, free agency draft. Yeah. Uh, um, so I, Jason Pominville coming back there, you know, we didn't talk a lot about that, but he played very well for Buffalo. Yep. And so you never know. Uh, things like that. Little players that, that sneak back in, uh, guys they get on, on a deal. Yep. Um, and I just saw the Bruins made – I mean, uh, the Sabres made some good moves. Yep. Well, and, th- and this and this list is just simply um, teams that made themselves better through free, free agency only, not through trades. Right. So um, this is just isolating just free agents in general. Uh, now, teams that have made themselves worse – because they've lost players through free agency and have yet to replace them with players of that quality or better. Uh, the Blackhawks, Blue, the Blackhawks, Blackhawks, Blue Jackets, Canadians, Penguins, Sharks, and Capitals. Now, obviously, if you look at that list, you're like, okay, well, these are all teams that were right up against the cap and had to clear out some cap space, yeah, and couldn't continue with the teams that they had because they wouldn't be able to fit them under the cap. That's essentially this group of teams right there were teams that just had to get rid of players uh, due to cap reasons. Although Montreal wasn't exactly in that, but um, they lost some players and haven't yet to replace them. Uh, Now, teams that I think have neither made themselves better or worse through free agency, some of these teams have either not made any moves at all through free agency or have added players and dropped players, but it was ended up being a wash. Uh, Ducks, Coyotes, Bruins, Sabres, Flames, Avalanche, Oilers, Wild, Senators, Flyers, Blues, Lightning, Golden Knights, and the Islanders. And the Islanders, I want to point out, have yet to make any free free agent moves of any kind. It's almost as if on June 30th, Gar Snow decided like, oh, I'm out of here. I'll see you in mid-July. Yeah. I'm not going to make any moves because they have done nothing in free agency. They haven't even signed American League players. They're just... You you look at the list of signings. Every team has at least one player they've signed. Right. May not have been an NHL player, but they've at least right. signed somebody. Right. Islanders have signed nobody. Yeah. Thus far, so uh, remains to be seen what what is up their sleeve. Uh, they got more issues than just player issues there in in New York, but uh, that's true. That's <laughs> they got, true. They got arena issues that they still need to work out. All right. So enough talking about individual players. Let's talk about some of the stories that we've come across over the past. Uh, week or so. And the first story I came across was Tampa Bay Lightning forwards Tyler Johnson and Andre Palat were among 30 players to sil- file for f- bleh, file for salary arbitration uh, on Wednesday. Now, what this is, is these were players that were offered, they're restricted free agents that were offered, um, what do they call it? The um, qualifying offer Mm -hmm. and player wasn't happy with that offer and they have the option to file for salary arbitration now of course the salary arbitration basically what happens there is the team that they're they're going against is going to try to say okay let's say for example a guy you know they're disputing a salary the team thinks that this player should be paid three million the player thinks he should be paid five million per year right well, the team is going to come out and give to the independent arbiter a list of reasons why they feel that the, he isn't worth more than $3 million. And they're going to bring up things like, you know, he's a bad locker room guy. He doesn't show up for charity events. You know, there's a n- number of things. You know, his stats weren't that good. You know, they're basically just going to call out their own player. Like, <laughs> it gets ugly, right? Yeah. Player, on the other hand, is going to you know, try to make a case of why he's worth $5 million, for example, in this example. So arbitration gets ugly. 
And most of these aren't going to go all the way to arbitration. Most of them ultimately end up agreeing to a contract before they reach arbitration. Because a lot of times when it does get that far, um, it puts a strain on the relationship between the player and the team. And it, right. you know, ultimately it, it, it could end up backfiring in everybody's face. So mm-hmm. so some of the players that have filed for arbitration, um, Jordan Martin-Cook, Martinook with the Coyotes, Ryan Spooner with the Bruins. Sabres had Bo- Nathan Bolio, uh, Johan Larson, Robin Lehner. Calgary had Michael Furlan, uh, Colorado, Matt Nito. Detroit, Thomas Tatar, Edmonton, Joey Legge- Legge- Legia. L.A., Kevin Gravel, Minnesota, Michael Granlin, and Nino Niederreiter. Montreal, Alex Galchenyuk, he ultimately signed. Uh, Predators, Victor Arvidsson, Marek Mazanik, and Austin Watson. The Islanders, Calvin DeHaan, New York Rangers, Jesper Foss, but he ultimately signed. Mika Zabinajad. Um, the Senators, Ryan Zingle and Jean-Gabriel Pajot. Pittsburgh, Brian Dumoulin and Connor Sheary. St. Louis, Colton Perico, Tampa Bay, Tyler Johnson, Andre Palat, as we just said earlier. Canucks, Reed Boucher, and Michael Chaput. And Vegas, Nate Schmidt, and Winnipeg, Connor Hellebuck. So those are the 30 players that could possibly go to arbitration. But again, ultimately, probably will not because, you know, arbitration gets ugly. All right. Now, have you heard Ilya Kovalchuk is going back to the KHL? Read this yesterday. Yep. Yes. There was a lot. Of, there was a lot of rumors that he was going to sign or sign and possibly get traded to an NHL team. Right. Um, but he ultimately, um, I don't know. It, it, the, basically, the story I saw was Kovalchuk was going to come back, but he didn't want to play for New Jersey. That's New right. Jersey was trying to do everything they could to to trade him, but New Jersey was not going to take nothing. They, they wanted they wanted fair value for him. Right. Uh, and of course, they couldn't ultimately decide you know, determine what fair value was. Obviously New Jersey felt he was worth more than all the other teams <laughs> decided they were because, yep. um, because they couldn't find somebody to trade him to. So Kovalchuk has decided to go back to the KHL for one more year. Uh, he'll be able to come back to the NHL as an and unrestricted. All in void. That cuts yeah. New Jersey right out. Right. So, so, and that, and that leads to you to believe, well, he really didn't have much value anyway. He only had a value for one more season. He'll come back next year. Because next year he'll be 35, and New Jersey will no longer have rights to him. That's correct. And he can sign anywhere he wants next year without New Jersey or anybody else's consent. Right. So I predict that we're going to see Kovalchuk next year in the NHL. I think we will, and I, sure. he could very well be a Vegas Golden Knight. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? You know? That would be something. Yep. All right. Uh, the last story I have is a bit of a kind of a down note. Um was the passing of Dave Semenko last week. Uh, Dave Semenko, a two-time Stanley Cup winner and line mate of Wayne Gretzky with the Edmonton Oilers, died Thursday of pancreatic cancer. He was 59. Uh, it was with great sadness that we announced the passing of Oilers legend Dave Semenko after a short but courageous battle with cancer, the Oilers said in a statement. Dave will be remembered as a fierce competitor, loyal teammate, fan favorite, and dear friend to so many. His legendary toughness on the ice is surpassed only by his kindness and caring for others and his equally legendary wit and sense of humor. Our hearts go out to Dave's family and many friends. Kevin Lowe, vice chairman of the Oilers Entertainment Group, said the banners hanging in Rogers Place honoring uh, Edmonton's all-time greats were indicative of Semenko's influence and guidance. Semenko, a Winnipeg native, joined the Oilers for the 77-78 WHA season. He scored the last goal in the history of the WHA, a 7-3 loss to the Winnipeg Jets in Game 6 of the Avgo Cup final that was the championship uh, of that league and then moved with the oilers to the nhl for 79 80 playing with edmonton until he was traded to the whalers on december 12 1986 one of the first oilers i met in 78 i didn't know at the time the impact he would have in my life and my career gresky said in a statement he was the toughest player i knew and yet the biggest teddy bear you would ever know a beloved oiler that will be missed dearly because of his kind heart and funny sense of humor he made us all better people the news of dave's passing this morning literally took my breath away hockey hall of famer mark messier said in a statement i love semenko like we all did he was a great teammate a loyal friend a loving father and worthy champion the oilers said semenko was first diagnosed with cancer three to four weeks ago after he called former oilers head medical trainer kenny lowe the brother of kevin i guess he had not been well for a couple of weeks kevin lowe said there was no record of any of his recent health because he hadn't been to a doctor in 15 years 
because I guess he had been the picture of health. The prognosis had been not great, but felt it felt treatable at the time, and it was just a rapid descent. Uh, he loved what he did, and this was the first year he wasn't scouting, but uh, as an ambassador. He was the first ever Oilers ambassador. Uh, we had so many comments from our customers and our employees of how fortunate they were to be able to work with him, and he was so happy, so happy of not traveling, and he was really, really happy with the new building, the team, and what he was doing, and he was really looking forward to the coming years. I'm shocked that this all went down so quick, and I'm going to really miss him. So that was uh, that was a story for, geez, I, wa- I was home that day, and I had the NHL Network on. You know how they have that show on the t- at noontime, the yeah. Hockey Central. That yep. was that was the entire show. That was, all they talked about was Dave Semenko, and they had various I players. Dave Semenko, yeah, yep. yeah, he was a great player. So, but uh, he was he was the he was the prototypical enforcer. He, yeah, he had the reputation of being Wayne Gretzky's bodyguard. <laughs> he basically allowed, or he made it so that Wayne Gretzky could do what he did on the ice. Right. right. So if anybody. You know, took any liberties with Gretzky, they had to answer to Semenko. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it was kind of a sad story to see how how quickly he went there. Yeah, that's really three very quickly. So it's a lesson. I guess it's a lesson to us all that we should probably see a doctor once in a while, and I should take right. heed of that because I'm kind of in that boat, and as someone who hasn't been to a doctor in quite a while, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, because he hadn't been to a doctor. He, you know, obviously the cancer went went unnoticed until it was too late. So, all right. Well, let's move on to our picks of the week. And yes. we'll go ahead and let you go ahead. Okay. With yours. Okay, Wayne. Mine is real, is, is based around this free agency period uh, that we're, we're, uh, we're talking about. Uh, and one of the guys who we mentioned during the free agency signing, Ryan Miller, uh, my pick of the week deals with him and, and actually his son, Bodie Miller. Uh, the article uh, from uh, from Bailey um, – let me make sure I get this. I think it's Bailey Meadows uh, who works with uh, the Vancouver newspaper titled Ryan Miller's Son Says Goodbye to Vancouver by Singing O Canada. And I do not have the, the – but you can pull this up on YouTube and it's really cute. Uh, I think his son's very young, two years old I think. Miller time is officially over in Vancouver. After much speculation, Ryan Miller will, in fact, be going to the Anaheim Ducks next season. He signed a two-year deal worth $2 million per season earlier on Saturday. This comes as little surprise to many uh, as there had long been rumors, and I remember this before he, before he went to Vancouver. There had long been rumors of Miller wanting to sign in California to be closer to his wife, who is an actress in Hollywood. Miller played great for the bulk of his three seasons with the Canucks. Despite a lot of losing, Miller surely has a lot of fond memories in Vancouver. The most notable, of course, is his two-year-old son, Bodie Miller. Bodie was born in Vancouver on March the 20th, 2015, shortly before the Canucks played the Calgary Flames in the playoffs. Shortly after the... <clears throat> the announcement uh, that he was off to Anaheim, Miller and his son took some time to reflect on their days as Canadians. Thank you to the Canucks, or, because as you know, Ryan Miller is an, is an American. Yes, he is. Yep. yep. Thank you to the Canucks organization and fans in Vancouver for wonderful memories, Miller said on his Twitter. Bodie, uh, Bodie's hometown will always be a part of us now. Uh, Bodie had a little something to sing as well. And, and again, I, I don't have it set up to, to play something like that. <laughs> I encourage all of you to listen to it. He has a little rendition of O Canada, and it's really touching. Many fans uh, uh, dreaded the idea of Miller coming to Vancouver a few seasons ago, but the aging goaltender acted like a true professional both on and off the ice during his three seasons there. He's now off to join fellow former Canucks Kevin Bieksa and Ryan Kessler in Anaheim. So good luck to Ryan. And, you know, Wayne, I thought about this. Ryan Miller is more than likely – because he's probably going to play a couple of years, two, three years at least. He is going to become the all-time winningest goaltender, the an American winningest goaltender, which I think right now is held by John Van Beesbrook. But if you look in the goaltending records, uh, Ryan Miller is, I, I don't even think he's 20 games behind him. He will pass 
John Van, Be Van Beesbrook and become the all-time winningest American goalie. And, you know, it's touching tribute to him. I, I think he's a great player. And there was a time there, where I remember, when he was the number one goalie in the world um, and uh, played as the, uh, as the uh, goalie for the United States uh, not too long ago. So uh, just wanted to take my hat off to Ryan Miller and yep. wish him well. Good. All right. Well, mine uh, has a bit of a um... – did you hear about the, uh, the the world record that was set? I did not. I saw this in the show notes. I've been dying to hear this story. All right. Well, a, a of course you get you get these marathon games that you come across. Well, apparently Guinness World Record for the longest hockey game ever was set in nineteen or in uh, uh, twenty fifteen uh, by a group of Canadians who put together a charity game in order that was designed to set the record. And they said it, uh, it was over 11 days long. Well, a group out of Buffalo decided they were going to break that record, and they, and they did complete that task this week. And here's the story. I found it out of the, uh, it was out of Sports Illustrated, but it's an AP story. Uh, it says, fatigue gave way to emotion for Les Kuntar on Monday when he attempted to put into perspective spending the last 11 days playing one continuous hockey game. Standing at center ice and sipping a beer, the 47-year-old former professional goalie's eyes welled with tears as he recalled a poignant moment that occurred early one morning during the bid to break the record for the longest game and raise money for cancer research. He says, A lady came in and she had a bandana on her head, so she was obviously undergoing chemotherapy, said Kuntar, whose career included playing six games for the Montreal Canadiens during the 93-94 season. I think I remember him. Mm -hmm. I remember that name. At the end... He came down with, or at the end, she came down with a white sign that said, thank you, and stuck it on the glass. And we all just stopped and tapped our sticks, he said. It's just amazing how many people are touched by this whole thing. Kuntar and 39 other Buffalo Recreational League players, many of them in their 40s, overcame injuries, illness, and countless blisters to unofficially set the record. God. It happened shortly after 7 a.m. when official time clock mounted in the stands overlooking center ice hit 10 days, 10 hours, 3 minutes, and 21 seconds. The time, the time surpassed the previous mark recognized by the Guinness World Records of 250 hours, 3 minutes, and 20 seconds established during an outdoor game outside Edmonton, Alberta in February 2015. Fans stood, cheered, and hollered and play was stopped briefly as players hugged on the benches and on the ice. They played for about 32 more minutes before the final buzzer sounded for a game that began at 9 p.m. on June 22nd and ended with Team Blue beating Team White. You get this score. 1,725 to 1,697. Oh. Yeah, this is the so it really is only, what, 27 goals between them. Yeah. It's a pretty even game. <laughs> yeah. Organizers must submit the full-length game video and official 54-page score sheet to Guinness for verification before it becomes official. Absolutely. A far incredible. more important tally came afterward. When uh, player and organizer Mike Lesakowski announced they had raised more than $1.2 million for Buffalo's Roswell Park Cancer Institute, surpassing wow. their goal by $200,000. An environmental engineer, Lesakowski, began organizing what became the 11-day power play a year ago. That's what they called it, the 11-day power play. Um, he was motivated to raise the money after his wife, Amy, was successfully treated for breast cancer at Roswell in 2009. And in honor of his mother, who died of cancer last year. It was hard getting up in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., sticking your feet in an ice bucket and getting wrapped up, Lesikowski said. But here we are, and it feels great now. The two teams were split into mostly seven player groupings, five skaters, a goalie, and one substitute, which rotated playing four-hour shifts. Play stopped at each hour for 10 minutes while the ice was resurfaced. Uh, many were forced to take additional shifts to fill in for those who became sidelined by injuries and illness because of r the rules prevented teams from adding replacements once the game began. All 40 players finished, although goalie Ryan Martin missed several days after coming down with strep throat and he had to be quarantined so he didn't affect, infect other players. Nicholas Fatty continued playing despite a broken nose after being struck by a puck. Whatever aches and pains the players felt washed away as they celebrated by sipping champagne, out of a makeshift cup on the ice. <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. I'm very tired. We all are, said Alan Davis, who at 65 was the game's oldest player. This event right here is humbling. The amount of money we raised is unbelievable. And But how, I'm, how am I with all of it? I think it's going to take a few days to sink in. 
The ice time was donated by the NHL's Buffalo Sabres owned uh, Buffalo Sabres owned two rink Harbor Center hockey and entertainment complex. Numerous restaurants chipped in by donating meals. A group of athletic trainers and therapists also was on hand 24 hours a day to treat injuries, tape up blisters, and provide massages. The players didn't leave the facility, cramming into four rooms that were turned into sleeping quarters. Kenny Corp, who led all scorers with 267 goals, based on statistics compiled through midnight, was eager to play more. (laughs) Absolutely, (laughs) Corp said, sporting a gash over the bridge of his nose where he was cut by an errant stick. For this cause, it's a small price to pay as opposed to someone going through chemotherapy or any type of cancer, Corp said. So, yes, I would do it all again tomorrow. So, awesome. great story out of Buffalo. That is super story. So, makes uh, makes me want to try to uh, break the record. <laughs> organize an 11-day event. Oh, my God. We'd have to find a rink around here locally that would be willing to give up 12 days of their schedule to. <laughs> yeah, to break a uh, – oh, man. To to, Amazing to be part of that record, but it's it's been a nationwide story. I've seen it in several places around around the league. But uh, um, yeah, great story out of Buffalo. So yeah, excellent. So congrats to Thank them you, for Wayne. for raising all that money, and congrats to them for just finishing. So I guess the way the rules work out is, you know, forty players, which would be twenty per side. Mm-hmm. It has to be one continuous hockey game, and you can't be you can't bring in like a hundred players and everybody takes shifts. It's got to be you know, two 20 man rosters like you would mm-hmm. have in an NHL game. Mm-hmm. So, and they broke, they each team broke up their 20 man roster into smaller groups and they took shifts. Amazing. So, but I guess they all had to stay in the building. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I'd be exhausted. I, I wonder how many hours of sleep they would get. Well, if they were doing, I was trying to do the math. If they were doing four hour shifts, uh, let's see, you'd have three groups, three groups of seven players on each team. Mm-hmm. So, I guess four hour shifts, you'd be, what is there, 24 hours in a day? So that's what, six shifts a day? Yeah. So you'd be on the ice eight hours a day as a player. Oh, amazing. And the other 16, you got to stay in the arena. You got to be, they're probably yeah. hanging out watching. Yep. For 12 straight days. <laughs> yeah. Whew, that is a marathon game right there. That is. So, but interesting story. It did make national news. Well, Sports Illustrated picked it up, among other nationwide news outlets. So, yeah. good story. All right. Well, that is the end of a very long podcast. Yes. <laughs> a lot to cover, Wayne. There was a lot to cover. A lot of free agent signings. So, um, again, next time we get together, it's going to be late July. We're tentatively scheduled around the 26th. Um, so we'll get you caught up on all the transactions that have happened between now and then. And it probably won't even be as much as we talked about tonight. It really slows down after um, I expect a few more this week. But after this weekend, it's really going to slow down because yep. that's when everybody involved with the NHL just basically gets out of Dodge, goes to their lake house or lake cottage or whatever, yep. and spends yep. the rest of July and the first part of August before they start bringing everybody back in for training camp. So so for about the next month or so after this week, it's going to be very, very quiet around the NHL. Um, but in the meantime, uh, the KHL will be starting up here soon. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be reporting on them. Yep, no, but we don't have time this week, but, but we'll be getting to them very, very soon because their season starts up uh, well before the NHL. All right, finally, um, as a reminder, again, if you want to get involved, you can tweet me. I'm at WayneHalley9. Steve is at SBall504Man. You can reach us at our Facebook page at feedback at Uh You can reach us through our YouTube channel at uh, thehockeynuts.com slash YouTube. Uh, and uh, if you are around for the live stream, uh, congratulations, you got through it. <laughs> it's been a long one. Uh, if not, if you're listening on the podcast, which is ultimately what the first prior, you know, the first, uh, the reason we're getting together each week is for the audio podcast. Um, of course, I will shorten it up through editing, but uh, um, I will be putting that out probably won't be tonight because I've got to get up early in the morning. Um, but probably tomorrow when I get home, I'll finish the editing and get it out tomorrow night. So uh, if you want to listen to the audio podcast, you'll, you'll get it there. But uh, other than that, uh, unless you have anything else to add, we're going to kill it. That's, that sounds good. All right. Have, so, a, have a good evening, Wayne. Great working with you and looking forward to year two. Yes. <laughs> so until next time, we will uh, see you then. 